the vibrant November colors of Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina. Beautiful night for a visit from Florida State, a team that Clemson has beaten for the last six meetings. The Tigers have won three in a row. They control their own destiny in the race to the ACC championship in Tampa. The Seminoles and the Tigers coming up. Penn State, a very disappointing season. Ohio State, Iowa, their place, they lose them both. C.J. Spiller has been electric. Could he vault himself into the Heisman discussion? They take on Florida State. And now, 55-12 the final. They've got Utah coming up next week. Christian Ponder, what a great season he's had. They've got Clemson coming up in Death Valley in 11 minutes. They could go to the Big 12 championship game. Kansas State? Big 12 North is a disaster, coach, I'm telling you. Jacoby Ford, explosive. See if the Seminoles can contain it coming up. Now, time to amp up. just some of the purple in this stadium but it's a sea of orange tonight a solid orange night is what they call it as Clemson knows that if they continue to win they're going to the ACC championship still a lot of football left though welcome everybody Brad Nessler with Todd Blackledge it's simple right now Clemson if they continue to win they'll go to Tampa they start tonight with Florida State a team that has struggled on defense and Todd you don't want to be struggling on defense when you got number 28 on the other side well CJ Spiller the senior tailback spit a lot of numbers at you. His head coach Dabo Sweeney calls him a program changer. Offensive coordinator Billy Napier says every week our game plan starts with CJ. How to find ways to get him the ball to win the game. And if you're silly enough to kick it to him you better look out because he's returned six kickoffs in his career for touchdowns. Three of them this year. The most explosive all-purpose guy in college football. Well for 42 years they've been congregating in that east end zone. As Frank Howard said back in 67, if you want to give 110%, you can rub the rock and head down through that end zone. If you don't want to, keep your filthy hands off it. I got a feeling everybody is ready to give at least 100% because Clemson, the first night game tonight in the last two years, and they are geared to take on Florida State.
22 points a game and Todd as this guy goes so go the Seminole. Yeah he's kind of an old school throwback guy tough hard nosed Texan not afraid to stick his nose in there has played through some rib injuries but he's doing a great job throwing the football leads the ACC 300 yards a game. This has nothing of the power of Frank Howard's rock. It's pretty this is though. the ESPN nest stone. If you're not ready for 110 percent in this telecast keep your grubby I'm hands ready. off it. I'm ready. Let's go. We're ready. We are ready. <laughs> Florida State and Clemson coming up tonight. You'll see the sensational C.J. Spiller a Heisman candidate for sure. Christian Ponder leads the Seminole. Glad you'll have his taste of the town. We'll see what he eats. This is going to be a great football game. Stick around. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Windows Spoke. To have your say on college football, text 140 to the number 4 ESPN. That's 43776. And Dr. Pepper, drink it slow. Doctor's orders. I think they're ready here. We're almost ready, but right now, third member of our team, Aaron Andrews. Brad, coach, first, what's the update on your quarterback, Christian Ponder, and his bruised ribs? Imagine he's ready to go. He's ready to go. Okay, and Coach, your defense, you said they've given up big plays all year long, so what's the key in stopping maybe one of the biggest playmakers in C.J. Spiller tonight? Back it up. Back up. Then tell them all week. Back up. So why you stop that guy? All right, Coach, thank you. Back it up, Brad. All right, well, he's going to back up to the goal line because Florida State won the toss and deferred, and so number 28 will receive. And as Todd put it, if you're courageous enough to kick to him, some people might think you're not very intelligent if you kick to him, but sometimes you can't keep it out of his hands because if you do, you might kick it to somebody else that could break it. Clemson at five and three. They're four and one at home. Their lone loss, a four-point setback to TCU. Here we go in Death Valley. Line drive skips off one of his teammates and Spiller from the three. And CJ gets out. To about the 24-yard line. So the Clemson offense will go to work with Kyle Parker, the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. And Dabo Sweeney in there in the middle, the head coach, in his first full season with some final comments to his offense before they take the field. You really like this kid, Todd. I, I do. I'll tell you what, he's got a great arm and a very, very quick release. The only downside for him is he's only about 5'11". And, uh, but it doesn't seem to affect him seeing over the defense. He'll start on the shotgun just inside the 25-yard line. Spiller goes for maybe three. As you check the Clemson starting offense on the top of your screen, their strength as far as the offensive line is Thomas Austin, the old man at left guard, and Chris Hairston, the left tackle. They've got their tight end back, Michael Palmer tonight. That'll be big, number 86. You see him line up on the right side. He missed last week's game with a concussion. So second down and seven. And it's Spiller again. Dances in the hole, breaks out close to the first down, about a yard shy. Nigel Branham made the stop defensively for Florida State. The thing about it in defending C.J. Spiller, you have to be disciplined in your gap assignments, in your pursuit angles. You just can't make mistakes because uh, if you do, he has the speed to go the distance. And Mickey Andrews, longtime defensive coordinator, knows that as well as anybody. Mickey, who announced this week, this will be his final season running the Florida State defense after 26 years. Play action, Parker, quick throw, got it out complete. Chad Deal of fullbacks, got a first down. Pick up a seven. Yeah, throw the dog a bone. Chad right. Deal is a physical lead blocker. He's only carried it twice. That's only his second reception of the year. Keep him happy. Keep him blocking for CJ. Oh, Parker looks over and the Clemson offense works from its own 41 yard line. Three wide outs. And again, Spiller flanks Parker in the gun. That's the tight end who I mentioned, Michael Palmer in motion. Play action to Spiller. Parker throws this one away. 
Let's take a look at our impact players for Clemson tonight. We talked a lot about C.J. Spiller, but you know what? He's not half as fast as this guy. Jacoby Ford is a jet when he gets his hands on the football. Ricky Sapp, he's a leader defensively with four sacks. And on the back end, guy that's leading the ACC in interceptions, DeAndre McDaniel with seven picks already this year. And now two tight ends set for Clemson. Second down and 10. I'm sitting in all orange. Their coach calls it solid orange. Spiller moves out of the backfield. Parker going to throw it out to him. And run out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. Bring up third down and six. Clemson's had a little trouble on third down this year, 36%. Yep. And part of that is a young quarterback. I mean, Kyle Parker is very talented, a very gifted young guy, but he's a freshman. And so most of what he's seeing, he's seeing for the first time. And uh, he, he's kind of grown into the position and I think has really made a huge strides since the loss to Maryland a few weeks ago. Ash and Ford and Palmer, the receivers, all to the top. And now Jacoby Ford will come in motion. On third down and six. Parker has time, throws it a little bit high, intended for Jacoby Ford. And it skips off his hands, incomplete. Clemson will have to give it up. Yeah, they had what they wanted. I mean, Spiller and Ford are who they game plan around. And they put him in motion to kind of identify the defense and see what the matchup would be, and he was open. He had gotten separation from Patrick Robinson, but the throw was too high. Dawson Zimmerman averages just under 40 yards a kick. Greg Reed, you talk about dangerous guys. The freshman can light things up if you give him room too. He's on the other end awaiting the punt. Oh, close end over end job. Reed's gonna have a chance from the 15. Reed through a crease, might be gone. Reverses his field, he actually ran into a group of orange. Had he stayed to this side, I think he probably could have outrun the punter, but he didn't as it is. A 40-yard punt and a 43-yard return. Well, that had a lot of bad to it for Clemson. It was almost blocked. It was a low end-over-end -end kick. And then Reed with a lot of room to make people miss. When you caught it, he is a dangerous return man as well. So Florida State starts in Clemson territory at the 43-yard line. Christian Potter at the controls. Going to throw on first down. Nope, I guess he won't. He tucks it and runs it, and with bad ribs, that's not exactly what you want to do too many times tonight. Well, and that's the thing they were worried about with him is running. And that was not a called run for the quarterback, but that's just the competitive nature of Christian Ponder. Didn't like what he saw on the pass play called and tucked it and ran. He has two touchdowns on the ground this year. Those are his passing numbers. He's third in the country in total offense. That's how efficient he has been yeah. both through the air and on the ground. Second down and six. Burt Reed on the move. They'll give it to Jermaine Thomas, and Thomas going to be close to a first down. Dragged down maybe a half yard shy by Cavell Connor. This Florida State offense is really playing well over the last three or four ball games. I mean, they had 555 yards last week against North Carolina State. A little hurry up now. Short yardage. Third and one. Potter's going to try to do it himself. I don't know. No, I don't think he got it. I don't either. He has stood up when he got to that line. Brandon May, the inside linebacker, one of the first guys that made contact. And it looks short. I think they're going to measure. Oh, they will. Yeah. They'll bring it out. A little just better to make spot sure. than I thought yeah, he they did. did. <laughs> Something to ponder. Yeah. So they'll bring the chains out. I know he's a tough kid. And I know that that's the safest play in that kind of a situation. I don't know you want to call many running plays for him tonight. Because if, if he gets it dinged the wrong way and you end up losing him, then you've really put yourself in a hole. Those ribs were injured as he did get the first down by the nose of the football. Injured against North Carolina State last week. I thought they got a great spot here because he didn't reach the ball out. I mean, he has stood up right there, and the ball is still tucked against his rib cage. There might be where he got it. Yeah, but I, you know, I thought he was stopped. Oh, well. He'll take it, that's for sure. So it's first down, Florida State. Again, the excellent punt return by Greg Reed. The running of Ponder. 
And Florida State at the Tiger 33 yard line. Play action, Ponder throws complete. Forward progress down at about the 27 to Ryan Owens. Bobby Biden in his 34th year as the head man of the Seminoles. Kind of been in battle, Bobby Biden, if you want to put it that way, because of the record this year. Four and four, two and three in conference play. 386 overall wins. And it seems like every week he's got to answer the question either. He doesn't have to answer the question about Mickey Andrews anymore. Mickey answered that for everybody this week, that he was going to step down. Bobby, I don't think so. Thomas trying to knock his own blocker out of the way, and he did. Put his head down, took his wide receiver, Rod Owens, with him and got the first down. We mentioned this offense over the last few weeks. The throwing of Christian Ponder, Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, really mixing it up well. I mean, Jermaine Thomas had a career-high 186 yards last week against North Carolina State. And uh, when they can run well and go with the, the way Ponder's throwing, they run a lot of screens to the wide receivers. They're a dangerous offense. You saw Chris Thompson come in because Jermaine Thomas lost his shoe, and Ponder throws on a run complete to the outside. And it's Reed who's run out of bounds by Richard Hall. And a flag down. Jimbo Fisher, as you saw there, the head coach in waiting. Holding call against Florida State. I think a lot of people wonder with that situation, Ledge, the head coach in waiting, Bobby Bowden, whether or not he's going to be around that much longer. Who's going to make the call on who's going to be the next defensive coordinator? Holding 79 offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. We asked Bobby about that when we met with him last night, and he said, it's no problem. Jimbo yeah. now, sit down. We'll get it straight down. <laughs> it won't take much time. So that was the answer. Yeah. Well, Bobby should make the decision because he's still the head coach. Exactly. But he's going to lean heavily on Jimbo's input and, and who he likes, and, uh, and they'll make a decision together. First down at 20. Thomas back in there with the shoe retied and an eye backfield. And he gets it, and he's got another solid gain on the ground down to the original line of scrimmage. Chris Chancellor made the stop. Jermaine Thomas coming off a career high. Last week, 186 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Here he comes again. Yeah, nice job blocking by the offensive line. You see the right tackle, Zebri Sanders, number 77, getting onto the second level. And that's uh, when your linemen are athletic enough to go to the second level, that's where you pop big runs. Now they've got it back where they can manage things by getting the 10 yards from the holding call back, second down to 10. Seventh play of the drive, empty backfield for Ponder. He'll throw. No, he won't. He'll be brought down by the Clemson defense for a loss of one. Brandon May, the middle linebacker. So that'll be third and long. Well, he wanted to throw, but Cavell Connor was coming on a blitz, and nobody picked him up, and he had to tuck the ball and run. And here's the first big third down of the game. And they'll have to earn it. Third down and 11. Three wideouts to the top. Ponder in the gun. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Didn't quite get to him. He lost it. Incomplete. Penalty markers all over the place. Intended for Rod Owens. Owens was open, but Ponder didn't have a lot of time. Got a tremendous amount of heat from the near side corner, and it's another holding call. Now it's going to be a matter of whether or not they want to decline this penalty. That's the discussion going on with Clemson, giving them their options. Jack Childress, our referee. Holding 88 of the offense, 10-yard penalty. There was still third down. 
Bo Relaford, the starting tight end. There was a safety blitz. Sadat Chambers is going to come off the edge and watch Relaford sees it late and just reaches out instinctively and grabs. It wasn't a big penalty in terms of, you know, that obvious, but he just got fooled by the safety blitz. They give Florida State another chance here, but it's third and 21. Ponder inside pitch to Burt Reed. Burt Reed, 20, and down to the 17-yard line. So Burt Reed, who scored the winning touchdown last week on a similar play, gets a 15-yard pickup. Now the Florida State's field goal unit will come out. Good-looking play here. Yeah, it was a nice-looking play. They got that upfield rush that they were looking for. It's kind of like a shovel pass from the opposite side of the formation. They got the, the tackle pulling and leading. And they set up an easier field goal attempt. Dustin Hopkins is 11 of 16 this year. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt. Snap and hold are good. And the kick is as well. So Dustin Hopkins, after the nice punt return by Greg Reed, it's the special teams that puts the first three on the board for the Knowles. ESPN's Monday Night Football, AFC contenders for the top, Big Ben and Hines Ward in the group. The Steelers take on a Denver defense that's helped the Broncos to a 6-1 and one start. Steelers and Broncos, ESPN's Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock here. Florida State by three. A little over halfway through the first quarter. They only had to go 26 yards in nine plays to get the field goal from Hopkins, who's got it teed up and set the kick away to C.J. Spiller. Already six in his career that he's taken to the barn from the four. And only out to about the 24 again. Nice coverage again by Florida State. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Race, keep us posted here. It's Clemson controlling their own destiny. If they win out, they'll win the Atlantic Division and go to Tampa December 5th for the ACC title game. Georgia Tech took a huge step toward that from the Coastal today. If you missed it, they won in overtime in Atlanta over Wake Forest. Here's Jacoby Ford on the end around. Got a good block. And he almost got out of there. The ball comes loose at the end, but it's blown dead at about the 32-yard line. Ledge, we talked about the Florida State defense. This is not what we normally see no. from Mickey Andrews and the group. Yeah, I think that's the most frustrating thing. I mean, these numbers are so uncharacteristic for Florida State, for Mickey Andrews' defense. And he said to us last night, so you know, the, we are always used to holding up our end of the deal, yeah. and, and we're just not doing that. We, we're not been disciplined. We've given up too many big plays. But they get a chance to come out and, and play again tonight. Trying to stop this guy. C.J. Spiller got the corner and bumped out of bounds. Patrick Robinson saved a big gainer with that tackle. I think that's, to me, watching C.J. Spiller on tape is an indication of where he's really gotten better this year. He has become a more physical runner. And I think before, when he shared time with James Davis, everybody thought Davis was the power runner, the inside guy. And Spiller was the flash guy, only could run on the edge in the perimeter, but he breaks tackles. He's a physical, compact, 185-pound guy, and that's really shown up on tape this year. First down, Clemson. Parker zips it, completes, and it's going to be another first down. It appears to Xavier Dye. <laughs> Xavier Dye, guy that played behind Aaron Kelly, who was so sensational over his Clemson career. Picks up another first down, and again, you see Clemson go without the huddle. Dabo Sweeney, first full season as Clemson head coach, took over with six games to go a year ago when Tommy Bodden stepped down. He's an excitable guy. He doesn't mind talking to you. Nice play fake by Parker. Quick throw, part of the tight end. And he bulls his way down inside the 40. The tight ends have really become more of a of a featured part of this offense with Billy Napier. That's the 35th reception by a tight end this season. That's the most since 1971 for a Clemson offense. That's so amazing. They, they throw it to the tight ends. They throw it to Jacoby Ford and they throw it to C.J. Spiller. And the other wide receivers are just kind of part of the plan. If it happens, they get the ball. 
Second down at five. Here's a toss. Spiller behind his blockers. And nice job by Florida State to close in behind that blocker. Dakota Watson with a stop and a loss of two on the play. So, so far, they bottled up C.J. Spiller yeah. pretty well with the exception of that 14-yard run. There's Billy Napier on the far right. He's the youngest coordinator in football bowl subdivision in the ACC. And then you got Mickey Andrews. Billy is only 30 years old. <laughs> Mickey's been at Florida State yeah. 26 years. He said something to him about that yesterday, and he said it's an honor to coach against a legend like Mickey Andrews. Parker steps up, throws across the middle, Jacoby Ford. Jacoby still on his feet inside the 20. 23-yard pass play. Achuko Jenajay saved it from being any bigger than it was. The Florida State tried to confuse. Look at that. Four defensive linemen, nobody down in the stands. Nice job by Parker stepping up in the pocket and creating a throwing lane for himself. And then you see the arm strength and the quick release to hit Ford across the middle. Jamie Harper checks in. There's Ford. He split to the bottom of your screen on first down. And that's under center. Kyle Parker on first down. At the 17-yard line. Nice play fake. Got some pressure, though. His safety valves the tight end. Allen. Allen. Touchdown. Touchdown is to the tight end after throwing to Palmer, the starter. It's the number two guy that rumbles down the sideline, 17 yards for the score. Richard Jackson in for the point after. And he missed it to the right. The snap was a little wide. The holder had a hard time getting it down in a hurry. But Kyle Parker got it to his tight end in a hurry. And the big guy takes it into the end zone to give Clemson its first lead. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by... Chevy and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. What a spectacular night in Clemson, South Carolina. Dwayne Allen, the tight end, a 17-yard touchdown catch. Capped the 76-yard march in seven plays. And with 3.53 remaining first quarter, Clemson out a kick back to the Seminoles. The extra point the number was missed, so 6-3. Chris Thompson, whoa, a wicked lick at the 20. 20-yard return. Let's take us back to the touchdown. Well, I want you to see something. Now, this is the intended receiver right here. That's Paul Allen. But the rush coming from the outside by Brandon Jenkins is going to make Kyle Parker throw it sooner than he wanted to. But he doesn't panic. He just knows i got to get away from him and get it out there a little quicker than the play called for. Great poise by Kyle Parker and a really nice call by Billy Napier. Then a little Clemson two-step back there in the pocket. Now it's Christian Ponder's turn from the 22, and the crowd getting louder by the minute. Pass is complete. Going to be close to a first down to Burt Reed as we check in with Aaron. Hey, Brad, just want to give you an update on Christian Ponder's bruised rib. He actually suffered the injury last week against NC State. It's in his back on the left side, and what he's wearing is a mold around his body, and then he's got this, you know, protective gear around the ribs. He's used to the gear, but he's not used to this mold, and before the game, before the team even came out on the field, Ponder was out there a good five minutes, and he didn't really sit down on the sidelines, Brad. He was back here just throwing to receivers, trying to stay loose. It's one of those things that will hurt again tomorrow like crazy if you've ever had bruised or cracked or broken ribs. And both 
Jimbo Fisher and Bobby Bodden talking with us yesterday. They were more concerned not so much with his general health at this time, but the fact that he didn't practice yeah. at all. Well, he did some on Thursday, but really didn't practice much at all this week. Well, and then talking to Jimbo before the game, the thing that concerns him in the game is he's such a competitor. He worries about him trying to do too much as a runner tonight and taking a direct hit on him. He is a throwback. He's not afraid to stick his nose in there for a quarterback. That's for sure. Jermaine Thomas broke one tackle, didn't get the second one as Goodman brought him down. We go to Reese. Fred, Oregon State and Cal, job at best, just scored a spectacular touchdown that was altogether electrifying and horrifying. Watch how high he goes into the air, and he lands on his back. Now, this happened several minutes ago, and they still have not moved Javid Best. He's being attended to on the field in Berkeley, and it's 14-6. The score extra point still has not been attempted. We'll get you up to date on Javid's condition as soon as we can. Oh, my goodness. All of us here will uh, cross our fingers and say a prayer on that one. A great kid and a great running back. We had a personal foul on Jarvis Jenkins, big defensive tackle. He comes out, and Florida State moves to the 49-yard line. Yeah, that's, uh, he, he might be more than gone to the sideline. And he's a valuable part of this Clemson defense in the middle. They fake the end around, and Ponder's got a man down the sideline. Down. 49 yards on a streak down the sideline by Lonnie Pryor. The official took about 10 seconds to signal touchdown. That's why I waited with it. Oh, a great oh, effort wow. by Pryor. That was tremendous. And a great call by Jimbo Fisher. I don't think Pryor has a reception this season. And they snuck him out of the backfield from his fullback position. First of all, they faked the end around, and Ponder turned his back to everybody. And for a second there, Clemson got no rush on him because they didn't think he had the football. So a great play fake by Ponder helped set that up. They're reviewing it as we thought they might because it was so close, but it looked like Lonnie Pryor got his hand over that pylon with the football. Watch this play fake yep, on fake the end the around. Dive, That's fake the reverse, hide the football, and just get those linebackers to bite a little bit. And you can see both the safety, Gilchrist, and the linebacker, Connor, were way up by the line of scrimmage, and nobody ran with the fullback. Talk about splashing on the scene as a receiver for Lonnie Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> he come on. And watch this effort again. He's airborne inbound. at the five. Yep. He's inbounds when he took off. Didn't step out of bounds and ball crossed the plane. I think that's a touchdown. It was ruled a touchdown on the field. And so it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn the call. <laughs> Tremendous effort and a great touchdown. After further review, the call on the field stands. The ball broke the plane of the goal line. Touchdown. Lonnie Pryor with a score. And Florida State back in front. We expected offense, and we've had it already here in the first 13 minutes of the ball game. That was a quick 78-yard drive in just four plays. Boy, both touchdowns, really nice play calls and good execution. The extra point for Florida State is up and good. So the Knolls go back in front. 10-6 Florida State, courtesy of Christian Ponder's touchdown pass. In the ACC this week, Virginia Tech beat East Carolina the other night. It was NC State and North Carolina both winning today. Miami put it on Virginia, and if you didn't see the Georgia Tech Wake Forest finish, try to take a look at that when you get a chance. As Paul Johnson in overtime went on fourth and one and played for the win at home. Got the first down, and Josh Nesbitt got the touchdown. And Georgia Tech now is a win at Duke away from representing the ACC from the Coastal Division in the ACC Championship. These guys in orange, if they win out, will represent the Atlantic side December 5th. Kickoff, C.J. Spiller from the one. Dances around, found a little groove. And then he is stood up and dropped. 
After a 26-yard return, we take you back to the score. Well, I want you to see something, how important play fake is. This is Pryor. He's going to go out around the end. Now watch these three guys, two linebackers and a safety. Watch how affected they are by the play fake. You tell a quarterback, hide the football and fake it. Now, right there, you see those three guys are all sucked up by the line of scrimmage, and nobody goes with the fullback. Great job by Christian Ponder making the fakes, selling the run, and hiding the football, and he affected three defenders for the touchdown. Andre Ellington checks in for Clemson for the first time tonight. Redshirt freshman. They fake it to him. They come on the end around to Spiller, and Florida State waiting for him. Nice job by Nigel Bradham. Loss of three, and Mickey Andrews' defense has done a nice job bottling up C.J. Spiller tonight so far. The, the thing about it is you just can't take a play off with them. I mean, those are 50-plus yard touchdowns this season. And, and up until last week, he'd had one just about every week. He, he only played, played about five yeah. snaps last yeah, week. Five, yeah. He touched five touches last week. They rest him. You know, he, he injured his toe in the opening game this year and has kind of played with a hurt toe the entire season. At the 25, second down at 13 after the loss on that carry. Parker looking right. Bradham's got him, but he throws and got it complete. Got something out of it, at least to Palmer, the tight end. And Parker makes something out of nothing because the outside linebacker almost got him. I like this kid. I like his arm. I like his quick release, but I like his demeanor and his poise. I mean, he doesn't get flustered, and I don't know if that's his baseball background and... You know, he's an excellent baseball player here at Clemson as well, but he just has kind of a coolness about him that I think is uh, it's pretty special. Third down at 11 for Clemson, trailing by four here in the late stages of the first quarter. Parker fires, intercepted. Coming back the other way is Jamie Robinson. Robinson's got a convoy. Robinson's got a touchdown. Jamie Robinson takes it 52 yards for the score. His third interception of the season. He had one in the end zone last week that helped seal the deal against NC State. Now he's got a touchdown tonight. No, well, that wasn't too cool. No. <laughs> he was going for his tight end Palmer and just really overshot him. Dustin Hopkins quiets the crowd here with the extra point that makes Florida State a 17-6 leader. Not how they scripted it here on the home field at Clemson. Robinson, part of that secondary, has been picked on a little bit this year. Well, here's Palmer, and he's going to run to the post. So you want the ball thrown here, but he's going to throw it out here where Robinson gets it instead of his receiver. Watch the post route, and the ball is thrown back behind the intended receiver, and Robinson has a clear shot at it, clear vision, and the ball hits him right in the stomach. You see the rest of the defense pick up the blocking for him, and you know that Nicky Andrews is a happy guy right here late in the first quarter. Nicky was also part of the Clemson coaching staff here in the late 70s. That was nice. They made an announcement over the uh, loudspeaker tonight thanking him for his contribution to the success of both these programs. He's part of, been part of five national championship teams as a player and a coach. Played at Alabama. What's he had 18 first-round draft picks off his so. defenses? Yeah, some crazy number like that. Yeah, something. Well, they've kept C.J. Spiller in check, but at any given moment, he can change the entire dynamics of a football game. So keep that in mind, not just on this kick, but every time he touches it. They're going to onside kick it. Nice job to scoop it up by the up man in good field position at the 45-yard line. So it's going to be good field position to start for the Clemson offense. Mickey was a player in Alabama under Bear Bryant. 
couple of national championships 46 All-Americans 18 first round picks Deion Sanders he always mentions Deion he said he set the standard for all those guys and guys like Corey Simon and Ron Simmons and Derek Brooks and you can keep going down the list and he's coached them all up over the years 26 seasons in Tallahassee and he'll stay in Tallahassee and uh, I'm sure we'll see him a lot when we're there but we might not have another coaches meeting with him and that's going to be sad because it's always a pleasure to be with Nick Spiller again all bottled up there's about seven Seminoles all around him I think right now Billy Napier might be thinking okay we got to maybe throw a little bit on first down Florida State is guessing run they're running to load the box at the snap they're not showing it right away but they're running safeties up late in the snap count to overcrowd the line of scrimmage and stop Spiller and they've dropped him for a loss the last three times he's handled it this is Clemson when they took the lead on the touchdown by the tight end but right back comes Ponder to Pryor then the interception by Jamie Robinson. Florida State's defense came in ranked 101st in the country defensively out of 120 schools. They're playing more like uh, the teams that Mickey has coached in the past. First winner of the Broyles Award as a top assistant coach. Again, if you missed it earlier, announcing this week that this would be his final season. Wants to spend more time with uh, his grandsons and his family. Uh, second down at 12 here. Parker, quick throw, incomplete. We talked with Mickey yesterday, and Aaron asked him why now the decision to retire. I sacrifice a lot in, in the job because I don't, I can't be involved at home like I need to. Can't be involved in church like I need to. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, it's uh, you know, uh, we we've, we've got two grandsons that uh, don't have a daddy, uh, and it was more of not what I wanted to do, but you know, as much as what I needed to do, what I had to do. Mickey's son passed away a couple of years ago, and he wants to spend more time with those grandsons. We'll coach him up. Parker swarmed under by Dakota Watson. But so that Florida State is getting pressure on Kyle Parker tonight. That, that's been missing in this defense. They have not been a good pressure defense. Only 17 sacks on the year coming in. This is a team that had 39 sacks last year. But so far tonight in the first half, they've been able to get to Kyle Parker and either force him to move in the pocket or knock him on the ground. And they have their 11th interception of the season, which they return 52 yards for a touchdown. This guy set them up for their first goal with his punt return of 43 yards. Greg Reed waiting on the other end of Dawson Zimmerman's kick. So Florida State has silenced this huge crowd tonight in Death Valley. This kick will never get to Reed. It's going to take a great bounce, though. Better not wait too long. <laughs> Almost did. <laughs> All the way down, just inside the two-yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese, Brad, time for Sports Center right now. First Saturday, November has been a crazy one in college football. Ricky Stanzi of Iowa was injured in the loss to Northwestern. Hawkeyes had the lead at the time, but the Wildcats upset them, knocked them from the ranks of the unbeaten. Her parents said he expected Stanzi to miss at least a couple of weeks. Alabama wins the SEC West, beating LSU 24-14. Julio Jones taking the screen pass 73 as Alabama wins at 24-15. Sports Center after the game. Stay current ESPN News. All right, Reese, thanks. So the SEC championship game is set. Florida against Alabama December 5 in Atlanta. ACC title still very much up for grabs. Clemson's in the mix, but they've got to keep on winning, and right now they're trailing by 11. In the middle is Thomas, maybe a yard. Again, Clemson, should they win the remainder of their games, they'd win the tiebreaker with Boston College, and they would subsequently win the Atlantic Division of the ACC. Georgia Tech is one game away from being the Coastal Champion if they win at Duke next week after an overtime victory over Wake Forest in Atlanta today. It's a big opportunity right now for this Clemson defense. This defense has played pretty well this year, but they are missing one of their best guys. Daquan Bowers, one of their starting defensive ends, injured his knee against Coastal Carolina. He's out tonight, and he's been one of their real leaders. Ponder from the 
shotgun in the end zone. The throw is complete out to about the nine yard line, but a nice open field tackle on Rod Owens over there by President Butler. And we talk about Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, is Kevin Steele, who worked with Mickey Andrews, was at Florida State in 2005 and 6, was at Alabama the last two years with Nick Saban, and uh, he's the first year coordinator here. Those days, one. They could really use his presence tonight. Christian Ponders, five for five. This one, he just floats in the air. Well, they, he knew he had an offsides penalty. And you look at the offensive line. None of the line has moved for Florida State. Still haven't moved. <laughs> I've never seen that. You tell those guys to hold their water, and they all <laughs> held their water, and then some. Uh, they, left, they held half a Lake Hartwell yeah. over here on that one. <laughs> offsides, defense number 94, five-yard penalty, yardage result, first down. Uh, I've never seen that. that that's funny. <laughs> They must get uh, fined by their coach, Rick Trickett, if they move on a play like that. Watch these offensive linemen. Now, here's the offsides, and Ponder knows he's got a free play. The only guy that moved was the tight end. Those five big hogs didn't move anywhere. Big Eaters stayed in the buffet line right there. First and 10 now. They've got some room to work. Just inside the 15-yard line. Back to the ground. And another tough run by Jermaine Thomas. Picked up seven. The thing about this Florida State offense is it's still pretty young. I mean, you've got all underclassmen on your starting offensive line. You've got a junior quarterback in Christian Ponder, a sophomore tailback in Jermaine Thomas. You do have a couple seniors in your wide receiver rotation, but you've got some good young ones that they're really high on. So th this is a young offense that gets better and better each time out. And both Bobby Vodden and Jimbo Fisher said last night, if all these guys come back, we'd be pretty dang good on offense. They're pretty good on offense already. Thomas. Nice spin to get the first down, and the ball came out, but one of his linemen's got it. Rodney Hudson with the thrill of a lifetime, scooping up the ball and rumbling for a few extra yards. Uh, it looked like they were trying to rip the ball out instead of make the tackle, and that's why Thomas was able to break the first couple tackles. Watch Jermaine Thomas as he gets hit behind the line of scrimmage. And Malik Goodman is just trying to rip, rip the ball out. Well, then Gilchrist actually does knock it out. Rodney goes for eight more yeah. yards. Looked good running it, too, didn't you he? You bet he did. He's going to say, Coach, how about goal line situation? What do you think? He said, hey, give me a piece of that <laughs> apple pie. <laughs> Other first down, Florida State. Ponder, all kinds of time. Going to throw short. Out across to Owens, and he's dropped. Right at the 45-yard line as we check in with Aaron. Brad, we were talking about defensive coordinator Kevin Steele. You know, when he had his defense over on the sidelines after Kyle Parker threw the interception, he sat there most of the time saying, just relax. You guys are so hyped up. Calm down. Looking over at him again on the sidelines. It's the same thing coming out of his mouth. He feels like these guys are just a little juiced up right now. And, Todd, we were on the field right before this game, and these guys were nuts. They were so excited yeah. for this game. Well, the first night game that Clemson's had in two years. They've been chopping at the bit all day long. Right now, they're getting it put to them by Florida State. Ball is out. Clemson, I think, has it. They do. Well, that'll juice them back up and make their defensive coordinator a happy guy. Rashar Hall has got the ball. Freshman safety. He's made a lot of big plays already this year. Well, it was Chris Thompson fighting for extra yardage, and uh, the ball got popped out. Looked like the middle linebacker, Brandon May, was the guy that ripped it out. So two plays in a row, the ball goes, gets fumbled by Florida State, and this time Clemson gets it. Rashad Hall wearing number 17 tonight, normally number 31. Clemson, Stanley Hunter, one of their teammates who had continued seizures with epilepsy, is now a student coach. And so every week, one of his teammates honors him by wearing his number 17. So 
Stanley's feeling pretty good about what Rashad just did with a fumble recovery. Gives it back to the Clemson offense at the 48. Parker, screen pass, Spiller. Made one miss, not the second man. Got down to the 43-yard line, though. Fanton here in Clemson, South Carolina. The Tigers trailing with 10-40 remaining in the second quarter to Bobby Biden Seminole, 17-6. Missed extra point. The reason Clemson's got six on the board. Here comes a blitz. Parker has time. Deep. Got it. Complete. Xavier die. Go! Touchdown of the season, his career-long 43 yards to the end zone. Well, I mentioned Florida State getting some pressure on Kyle Parker, so what does Billy Napier do? He calls a maximum protection play. Keeps both backs in to block. Six linemen, there's only two guys in the pattern, and Die gets open for the touchdown. Clemson's going to go for two. Florida State takes a timeout prior to that two-point attempt. Dabo Sweeney, his team, big play. They needed one. They got it. And Xavier Dye. Todd was talking about it earlier. When you get really past Jacoby Ford in the tight end, there's not a lot to go around. That's only the ninth catch of the year by Dye. Here's how it looks. We mentioned the Atlantic. Now, Clemson's got the tiebreaker over Boston College because they've already beaten the Eagles this year. Florida State trying to hang in there. They'd have to win out and hope that BC loses two games. There's the rest of the standings in the Atlantic. In the Coastal now, Georgia Tech, the highest ranked team in the BCS at number 10. They won today in overtime on a gutsy call by Paul Johnson to score and beat Wake Forest. They lost to Miami, but they've got the lead in the division. So Georgia Tech just needs a win over Duke next week, and they're going to Tampa December 5th. Well, I like that. I, I like that series. I mean, it was only two plays, but they came out throwing on first down, and then they came back with a maximum protection. They kept the tight end in. They kept both backs in, and they only went two guys in the pattern. Try to give Kyle Parker the best protection you can get and let him make a throw down the field, and he did this that. For him, his 11th touchdown toss of the year, and that's a new freshman record for a Clemson quarterback. C.J. Spiller behind him. Two-point conversion attempt for the Tigers. And now Florida State's going to pound the tight end. He lifted from his stance a little bit, or at least looked over to see what the call was. I don't think he was ever in his stance, though. So. Prior to the snap, dead ball, high contact, all sides, 98 defense, half the distance to the goal. We're still on the track. Marcus White, they take it half the distance to the goal as he jumped in there and hit Palmer. Yeah, I mean, the tight end is allowed to, to lift up and reset. Obviously, a, a tackle or a guard's not allowed to do that. And let's see if that changes the play. We'll probably never know, but they're a lot closer to the goal line now with Spiller behind Parker. See if they try to run it in or give Parker... A little option on the edge to do one or the other. It's just straight C.J. Spiller, and he got there. Two-pointers good. I think it was probably a run-pass option the first time, but because they got a little bit closer, it made the run a little bit more inviting. And why not give it to 28 to make it count? Xavier Dye. With a long touchdown, Spiller, the two-point conversion, and we're back to a tight game in Death Valley. Time before the kick tonight for our trivia question. We gave you a little hint earlier, actually. Mickey Andrews played wide receiver on a team that won the 1964 National Championship. Who was his quarterback? Uh, I know that one. Kick. He'll be taken at the 11-yard line by Harley, and he's drops at about the 21-yard line. Both teams doing a good job on their kick coverage tonight. Beautiful night in Death Valley, 17-14 ball game right now. We welcome you back. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackley, Jaron Andrews down on the field with us. 
You know, it's kind of ironic. We talk so much about C.J. Spiller. The biggest play he made tonight was a yard and a half for the two-point yeah. conversion. <laughs> well, both quarterbacks are playing well, and, and we kind of knew this would potentially be a shootout. You got two very hot offenses right. coming into this ball game, and really between the two quarterbacks, only one bad decision by Kyle Parker on the interception. It was returned for a touchdown. Christian Ponder hasn't missed a pass yet. Six for six, 94 yards and a touch. He'll touch it here from his center at the 22-yard line. And give it off to Jermaine Thomas, who got popped in the backfield, and he's going to lose a couple. Nice job by the Clemson defense. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brad, UConn and Cincinnati playing at Nippert Stadium. Many seeing that on ABC. And the Huskies on the move. Jordan Todman on second and goal walking into the end zone to tie the game at seven. Bearcats have answered with a field goal. Remember, UConn, the last team to beat Cincinnati in the regular season. That game on ABC, the ESPN 360. Gators up by 13 at the half on ESPN 2. But that touchdown and two-point conversion did a couple of minutes ago has frenzied this crowd. You can feel it. Christian Ponder's trying to quiet him. Burt Reed won't get anywhere. Yeah, it's frenzied the crowd, and it's fired up this Clemson defense. Okay, we, we go to a lot of places in the SEC, a lot of great venues for college football, but I'll tell you what, this place doesn't take a back seat to any place. I mean, in terms of atmosphere, stadium, noise, facilities, pretty special place on a Saturday night, I'll you tell you. You can see those defensive players out there. The swagger. With a third down and 12 upcoming. We'll let you watch Florida State. You'll know in a minute if they get the first down. Offsides, another dead play. And again, the linemen remain in their stances. Uh, you know, that kind of goes back to what Aaron talked about, how hyped this team was. I mean, it's great to play with enthusiasm, but you got to play with poise. Offside, number seven of the defense, a five-yard penalty. And Ricky Sapp was the guy that was doing most of the dancing. Yeah. I mean, you know, that that's great to play with enthusiasm and to have a high motor, but you got to play with boys. I mean, you had them third and 13, and now you give them free five, and it's third and eight. And a quarterback as good as Christian Ponder, you don't want to do that. Good enough for a first down. Pass interference, number two of the defense. Penalty places the ball at the start of the foul. First down. DeAndre McDaniel leads the ACC in interceptions. He is called for the penalty. They got a little pressure on Ponder. He had to kind of throw it back and up. He wasn't the guy in coverage. That was Cresden Butler yeah. who was in coverage. Florida State takes a timeout. They've got a first down and a three-point lead when we come back. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Bud Light with the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light. The difference is drinkability. And Lowe's, make your home the happiest place to be this holiday season. Lowe's, let's build something together. Big wins on the road get you a headstone over by the practice field here at Clemson. That previous play, the pass interference, all due respect to DeAndre McDaniel, he wasn't anywhere near the football, so the penalty wasn't on him, though that's the number that was called. Here's a little swing pass to Burt Reed. Reed down the sideline in the open field. And Burt Reed might take it. 
It'll be bottled up as he got to the 21 yard line. But a huge play. Yep. Pick up a 43. A nice job of Florida State capitalizing on the on the call. I mean the, the interference Clemson I think still kind of shaking their head frustrated by the interference call and they weren't ready for the next play and a well designed screen pass and this is a big part of the Florida State offense. You see Hudson the all American guard out in front and Burt Reed doing a nice job using vision and running after the catch. Just outside the 20 yard line. Both Pryor and Thomas in the backfield. Now well, the umpire is going to stop play. Apparently they're reviewing the previous play. And I'm not sure why unless it was the spot at the end. Apparently because he was close to the sideline maybe that's what they're looking at whether or not he stepped out of bounds. There's the screen pass and Reed with his guard out in front of him. Yep. I don't think he got anywhere near the sideline. Well, the other thing you see on that play is we talked about the absence of Daquan Bowers and Andre Branch, number 40, was in on that play and he was too busy rushing up the field, didn't read the screen and get off the block to make a play on Reed. That's what they're looking to see if he was on the sideline. I think he was clearly in bounds. Bird doesn't have very big feet. No. The play was under further review to ensure that the ball carrier stayed inbounds. The call on the field is confirmed. It is a first down. He stayed inbounds. First down. Take you back about three plays on the penalty. Yeah, well, first of all, here's DeAndre McDaniel. All right, so he's rushing. So the interference couldn't have been on him. The only guy was this guy, Cresden Butler, who was guarding the in route. And I thought he made a pretty nice play on the ball. He times it, he jumps in front of it, the ball's a little bit high and behind the receiver, and they uses, got pass interference on that call. Uses his front hand, yep. looked like a good play, so we're baffled a little bit by that one. There's Ponder under pressure, and it's intercepted by Clemson. Cody sends the ball with a pickoff. So now each quarterback's made one mistake. Well, Ricky Sapp had an offsides penalty earlier in this drive. This time he's going to get pressure on the quarterback. Watch number seven get into the body. The, the middle linebacker, Brandon May, also there, forces the early throw and the high throw, and it's intercepted by Sensabaugh. Big play by the Clemson defense. And now the offense takes over at the 21-yard line. Ponder, that's only his fourth interception of the season. Spiller was going to tiptoe out, and he actually lost a yard on that one, too. You mentioned the four interceptions for Ponder. He threw two of them last week against North Carolina State. Neither one was really his fault because both balls were tipped last week at the line of scrimmage. This one was not tipped, but the pressure from Sapp and Brandon May forced a bad throw. And you got to know that shot he took when he let go didn't feel good on yeah. his ribs. 7.23 in the clock running in the second quarter. He rides the handoff to Spiller and he's going to be bottled up. And is that yeah. about five plays in a row where they dropped him for a loss? Well, Kevin McNeil, what a great play by him. I mean, he almost tackled both the quarterback and Spiller <laughs> and took the ball from him. Watch McNeil in the backfield. I mean, he almost tackles both of them. Total to finish him off. McNeil leads the ACC in fumble recoveries so far tonight. At the 17 yard line now as Parker comes up fire, little slip screen to Kobe Ford. Ford headed to the sideline, got the first out of bounds at the 35 yard line. And there you see some of the speed, even though he wasn't really in the open field. 
It's funny because you know the movie Dumb and Dumber. Well, with this team, it's fast and faster because CJ's got great speed. This guy has world class speed. So he gets his hands on the football and, you know, he just can outrun just about anybody. He's really made himself a better receiver, right. too. When he came here, he was always a fast guy and loved football, but he wasn't a polished receiver. And he has gotten much better as a wide receiver. Now his roommate Spiller cuts it inside. Goodbye, Spiller. No, going to be knocked out of bounds. Nice speed by Florida State's defense. <laughs> See well, that's the thing about it with him. I mean, you can show those graphics, eight carries and five of them for yeah. no yardage, but it only takes one. And if you let down at all or give him a crease, I mean, it's a big play, and he shows great patience in there waiting. Gets a nice block from Dwayne Allen, his tight end, and then the speed to get to the outside. Fast and faster. <laughs> they just did it backwards on you. Yeah. Here's Ellington. They like him, too. They think if you squint hard enough, you almost see a little C.J. Spiller in Andre Ellington. Well, a little bit earlier in this quarter, we asked you. It's a trivia question for tonight. Mickey Andrews played wide receiver on a team that won the 64 National Championship. It was at Alabama. Who was his quarterback? That should have given you the clue you needed. Joe Willie. Mammoth. It's good company. Well, Mickey's defense a little bit on its heels after that spiller run of 45 yards. And it's got him in the red zone. Clemson trying to take the lead. They trail by three with five. 10 remaining in the quarter. Parker in a lot of trouble. Got rid of it quickly, though, to Ford. And Jacoby gets knocked out of bounds. On the far side, everybody over there looking for a flag. Tell you what, Jacoby did a lot of running on that play. He came in motion, he went back, he came in motion again, then he ran out the backside and caught the pass. It's a lot of work for number six. Fake to the tailback, and then the quick outlet release to Ford. Watson with the, the hit out of bounds and uh, probably okay that there's no call there. Yeah, it's just a little show. Wouldn't have been so good if that brick wall would have been closer. Right. <laughs> Big game for both Spiller and Ford. Two of 16 Floridians on this Clemson team. Third down and six. Here they come. Florida State with a blitz. Parker got it. And it's die again. To the one. Well, nice job by Kyle Parker. Just going where the where the defense read takes him with the football. Not getting locked into saying, I've got to throw to Palmer. I've got to throw to Jacoby Ford. If Xavier dies, the guy open. That's where I'm going with the football. Shallow cross against the blitz. He sees it. One missed tackle and a first down for Clemson. And now a first and goal. And timeout. We have a timeout, Clemson. That's their first timeout of the half. With 4.46 remaining, they'll come over to the sideline and mass and meet with Coach Sweeney, talk it over. Kyle Parker hit his last five passes, Todd, to get him down there. As you said, he's mixing it up, kind of like Christian Ponder's doing it for Florida State. Well, he did a really nice job on that play because there was an unblocked man coming on the blitz. He knew it. He just backpedaled a little bit and was able to get enough on the throw because of that arm strength and quick release to get the completion. That's, uh, that's not an easy throw to make under duress. Well, only three races remaining in the race for the cup. Jimmy Johnson's got a lead to his quest for an unprecedented four straight championship this week. Heading to Texas, Dixie's 500 at Texas. Sunday at 2.30 Eastern on ABC. Coverage begins with NASCAR countdown. There's your top five. They get those sick good stuff. Well, good stuff for the Clemson faithful because they've got a first and goal at the one yard line. C.J. Spiller's gonna strap up both sides of that chin strap and he's gonna have Three tight ends and a fullback in front of him. The fullback, Chad Deal, right in front of him in an eye backfield. Clemson try to take the lead. And whistle stop play again. Got a flag down on the end zone. We have a legal substitution. 
substitution. There are 12 players in formation, more than three seconds on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. It remains first down. Well, earlier we had a yard and a half penalty and a two-point conversion. That one's about a six-inch penalty. Same formation. First and goal, Tigers. From Sky Cam, behind C.J. Spiller. He gets the call, and he won't get the touchdown. Nice job defensively again by Florida State. Another penalty marker. We're going to get another two-inch penalty because that was another offside for Florida State. Trying to anticipate the snap count on the edge. Offside, number 90 of the defense, half the distance to the goal line. It remains first down. Moses McCray that time. Pretty soon, I'm not so sure I don't change the play and just let my quarterback kind of burrow yeah. in there because it's awfully close now. The football is almost touching the goal line. There you see it with Dalton Freeman, the center, over it. And now Clemson jumps. Oh, boy. False start. That's going to be first and goal back at the five and change. Start. 74 the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. <laughs> well, we thought Florida State was making it hard on their defense. Clemson just made it a lot harder on their offense. Yeah, the problem with this is uh, it's a full five yard penalty. Those defensive ones, when you're inside the five, they just go half the distance. This one goes the full five yards back. Take all those tight ends out, put in the wide receivers. A whole different story. First and goal now for the Tigers at the 705. Trailing by three here with 4.15 remaining in the second quarter. Play clock at two. He just got the snap. Parker in trouble. Hit as he's trying to throw. Or is it a fumble? Well, it could have been a fumble. I don't know what they've called it yet. I didn't see any sign of an incomplete pass yet. They're conferring about it right now. Florida State football. If you call it a fumble, you can review it and could possibly change it. But it's called a fumble on the field. Parker, a little flustered. I think that is a fumble. I, I do don't too. think he was trying to throw. He didn't feel the pressure coming from behind from Marcus White. Todd, you've been in that situation a bunch. The arm's got to be going forward. I don't think he ever got a chance, did he? I don't think so. And again, it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn the call in the field, which was that it was a fumble recovered by Florida State. But th that play was bad from the beginning. The play clock was down. Right. They were looking to the sideline. They didn't look like they were all on the same page. And then Parker looked flustered when he got the football. You talk about bad from the beginning. They had it at the four-inch yes. line. And they had a false start penalty, and that's what set them back in a completely different formation with wide receivers yeah. instead of tight ends. And you're thinking right there, worst case scenario, we tie the game with a field goal. You know, we, we don't score a touchdown. Worst case scenario, we kick a field goal, we're 17 17 right. at halftime. It, it just got even worse. I mean, you don't even anticipate this happening. They get the five yard penalty, and now a fumble. There's a fumble. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, but I think it's the right call. And so a big play by the Florida State defense. We talk about penalties killing you. That just killed, as Todd said, at least three, and you're tied. Now, Florida State's got a timeout and four minutes to work with, and they've got the most efficient quarterback for the most part in the ACC. It's not out of the question. They might not do something scoring-wise. Thomas cuts outside. Jermaine Thomas, another good game. All the way to the 17. All kinds of time for the Knowles right now, leading by three. Well, the last time Clemson's defense had Florida State backed up like this, they couldn't stop them. They let them get all the way out to midfield, and then they got the turnover, but they weren't able to keep them pinned down. And here again, the first play from deep in their own territory, a first down for Florida State. Remember, one of those turnovers by Clemson was a 52-yard touchdown return for a score off a of Parker misfire. 
Now this time on a fumble. He's given Florida State another chance here. Jermaine Thomas, this time bottle up's gonna lose a yard as we check in with Reese. Brad, as the flags fly in your game, UConn and Cincinnati. 10-7, Bearcats with the lead. Zach Blair is still in for Tony Pike. You know, oh, Tony's a great player. He's going to have a hard time getting 12 out of the lineup. Blair is 10 for 12 passing. He's run for a touchdown. It's 17-10, Bearcats. Cincinnati trying to stay in the unbeaten category. Iowa fell out of that elite group today. Upset by Northwestern. Here, two teams fighting for their life in the Atlantic Division of the Atlantic Coast Conference in the final month of the season. Ponder lofts one. That's intercepted by Maxwell. And Maxwell cut down at the 24. I don't know where he was going with that one. Boy, I don't either. Neither does Bobby Bowden. Well, you had two receivers that were confused and were in the exact same area. And obviously, Christian Ponder thought one was turning up the sideline, but in any case, he he doesn't just let this ball go. He thinks one's going up the sideline, and both Fortson and Easterling were standing in the same spot. And a gift for the Clemson defense. And the offense at the 24-yard line, so they can turn right back around and use this last two and a half minutes to get back where they were moments ago. Parker wants to throw a screen, and that's kind of blown up by Florida State's defense. I tell you what, this has to be as good as Florida State's defense has played. With the exception of maybe that BYU game when they went out to Provo and created a bunch of turnovers and blew out the Cougars. They've had their struggles on defense. And they gave up a lot of yards, and a lot of points to North Carolina State last week. Spiller again bottled up and dropped for a loss. One more time by Kevin McNeil, who's having a heck of a game at the defensive end for Florida State. Sixth time C.J. Spiller's been dropped for a loss. But Florida State's offense, three straight possessions with a turnover, has given Clemson this opportunity with a little over two minutes to go in the half. So four interceptions by Christian Ponder in the last two weeks. Third down here. And long, third and 12. There's the slip screen to Ford's going to cut it back outside, but there's too many Seminoles defensively there. They knock him out of bounds. That was good defense by Florida State. They played zone. They wanted to keep everything in front of them. And they, they know that Ford has great speed, but if they keep their angles and keep their leverage and keep him in front, they'll stop him short of the first down. Watch him just hem him in, use the sideline as an aid, and then knock him out of bounds. Richard Jackson, 17 out of 23 on the season. This will be a 38-yard field goal attempt to try to knock this game up late in the second quarter. Kick out of the way, and it is no good. A missed extra point, and now a missed field goal that's very makeable. Talk about blown opportunities. A happy defensive coordinator on the other sideline, though. Florida State stays in front. Todd started all that taste of the town stuff right here in Clemson. That looks good. Located on College Avenue in downtown Clemson is a great little spot called the Blue Heron Restaurant and Sushi Bar. Now, it was opened in 2002 by a couple local products, brothers Tim and Sean Chastain. The reason it's so quiet now, it doesn't actually open for an hour. But I've got a meeting with Bobby Bowden to go to, so the guys were kind enough to let me come in a little bit early to do my thing. Now, the menu at Blue Heron is very extensive, but what I zeroed in on are the fried green tomatoes and the pan-fried grouper that's prepared Oscar-style with grilled asparagus, lump crab meat, and hollandaise sauce, and it's served over fire-roasted corn and sun-dried tomato risotto. Hmm. Afternoon delight.
<laughs> nothing, like, nothing like having your own restaurant yeah, that own opens restaurant. up. Yeah. Nobody's even there except you. I'll tell you what, that place is a great place. Oh, we, yeah. went there, we went there the night before, and it, you know, it got hopping later on that night. The night before did. a game, I mean, they, they were kind enough to let me come in there. But, uh, yeah, that was a, a nice, healthy meal, too. I was going to you know. say, the fried green tomatoes, I had those, and I had a filet that was unbelievable. There's a crowd. But you did go healthy kind of like all day, Yeah, which is pretty good. Because what you probably would like to do is go to back to Max's where you started all this and yeah. have something really greasy. Well, That'd be yeah, good. That, that was a fun place, too, <laughs> going to Max's. You know, the, the, the rumor was there, you, you can't graduate from Clemson unless you no. eat a cheeseburger at Max. That's and right. So I did that, but I also got the grouper at, uh, at the Blue Heron. Well, so. We made a swing by the Esso Club, too, so we hit about everybody we could while we were in Clemson. If you want to win a $100 gift certificate to the Blue Heron, log on to ESPN.com, search Taste of the Town, and tell us why you deserve to win. And now both these teams hoping they can win tonight and keep alive in the Atlantic Division. Here's Jermaine Thomas. He has run really well tonight. We check in with Reese Davis. Brad, coming up on the Wendy's Halftime Report, we'll catch you up to date on the fate of all the undefeated teams. Stanford has suddenly changed the look of the Pac-10 race, and we'll also get you up to date on all the scores and highlights throughout. And you know, I was thinking about Todd's taste of the town. I really believe, I don't know about all that fancy food. He's much more of a fried pickles at the SO Club kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we tried a little bit of everything while we were there, trust me. Run for Thomas. Good for a first down. Marcus Gilchrist with a stop with one minute, four seconds remaining. First down, Florida State. Jimbo Fisher, his team. A two-game winning streak coming in, but still just two and three in conference play. They can draw even at 500 in both the conference and gaining on Clemson and Boston College if they can pull off a win here on the road tonight. Jermaine Thomas again. Looks like he's got another first down or very close to it. And this time Jermaine a little bit slow to get up. Yeah, they don't want to lose him. He's no. running hard tonight. Again, coming off that career game last week, 186 yards against North Carolina State, favoring his right lower arm. Either his elbow or his wrist. It looked like when he tried to stretch out to try to get the first down, he might have landed a little bit funny on that. Clemson had a player down, too, that they brought out. Jamie Cumbie was shaken up. And he's on the Clemson sideline. Meanwhile, they're going to bring out the chain gang to see if Jermaine got a first down right at the 20, uh, the 42-yard uh, line. And first down again, right on the yellow line. Well, big battle, AFC. Title contenders fighting for conference supremacy on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Mile High to take on the Denver Broncos, who are 6-1. and one. Steelers and Broncos, ESPN's Monday Night Football. 8.30 Eastern coverage starts at 7. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Ponder. Quick throw out to Owens, and he's bumped out of bounds near midfield. Ron Owens. Rod's one of the few seniors Todd was talking about. They did have some senior guys yeah. on the outside, but really, when you look at Burt Reed and, and Fortson and Easterling and all those guys are a lot younger. So virtually everybody coming back for Florida State on offense next year. Rod's an exception. Senior out of Jacksonville. Low snap. Ponder handles it. Fires complete again on another first down. Whoa. And there's a wicked takedown. So Rod Owens, back-to-back -back passes out here on the near side in front of the Clemson bench, and that time Rod got deposited by Myron Maxwell, who had an interception earlier in this quarter. Well, the last time Owens was able to get out of bounds, and this time Maxwell wouldn't let him go. So the clock really working down now inside of 15 seconds for Florida State. They do have one timeout, but they've got about two plays left. If they have that many, they're going to try a screen, too, in the middle of the field. And now it's down to three, two, and trying to get the timeout called with one second remaining. They do. We'll be back to see what they do with that one tick of the clock when we return to Death Valley in a minute.
Dustin Hopkins career long is 52 yards. Bobby Batten's decided to give him a crack at a 58 yard field goal. And whistles. Dabo Sweeney called timeout at the last minute. The kick was short. It was online but short. Well, the bad news is that's almost like a practice kick. Talking about Veterans Week, Veterans Day coming up on Wednesday. Rick Triggett, a former Marine in Vietnam, served his tour of duty and started coaching in 1973. Rick still uh, coaches like a uh, drill sergeant, yeah. pretty much. I think once a Marine, always a Marine. Oh, yeah, I no don't doubt. think that ever changes. And uh, he is. Uh, He's an outstanding offensive line coach. He's hard on the guys, got a tough love approach, but he believes that uh, there, there's just a higher gear that you can get guys to, and uh, you got to be a little bit of a SOB to get it out of guys sometimes. <laughs> well, again, that was basically a practice kick for Dustin Hopkins because he got to follow through even with the timeouts. So he knows how short it was, but he knows also it was online. Hopkins, 58-yard kick on the way. And it's going to be returnable by Butler. Preston Butler. And he'll be brought down by the kicker. Well, you know, you talk about penalty markers, down. You talk about missing the kick and then making the stop. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Penalty marker down at about the 13-yard line. It's a holding on the return. So that should do it for the half. There's Hopkins, and he's going, ah, oh, dang, it's short. Well, I'll get in the play, though. I don't want this guy running this thing back. That would not be good. Yeah. And then boom. He even had his head on a swivel. I you know, had to have on a head on the swivel. Well, the better tackles of the game by the kicker on the final play of the second quarter. Even kickers like to get a little dirt on their uniform every now oh, and then. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Let's check in with Aaron. Coach, a couple big missed opportunities for your offense. What's the biggest reason why? Well, we just got to keep our poise. You know, defensively, uh, early on, you know, we jumped all sides a couple times. We, we don't cover a guy in man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, offensively, we're moving the ball well. Uh, just, you know, you get down there and you jump offside on first down and, and goal, and then we they, they create a fumble, but we're getting turnovers too. It's just the two good football teams battling out, but we, we just got to keep our poise. Come out here and play Clemson football. We'll be fine. All right, Coach, thanks, Brad. A lot of football left, as the coach is talking about. Halftime here in Death Valley. Florida State on the road leading Clemson 17-14. Time to send you to the Wendy's Halftime Report and Reese Davis. Reese? 9 and 0. Oh. Kyle Parker of Clemson. A lot of talent. Big arm. Xavier Die going in. Tigers within three. ESPN's college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Florida State on the road leading Clemson 17 to 14. A couple of mistakes by each team have been costly. As you take a look at the Chase Sapphire first half statistic, very even in almost every category. Five penalties for Clemson. That's a little bit unlike them, but you see the passing yardage almost dead even right now. And Todd, you know, uh, coming into this, we thought James Spiller would have a sensational night. So far, he's been held in check with the exception yeah. of one 45-yard run. At the risk of sounding like a coach, I think the team that makes the least mistakes in the <laughs> second half is going home with a W. Yeah, well, I mean, then it's not just turnovers. I mean, Florida State had one more turnover than Clemson. But Clemson, a couple bad snaps. They missed an extra point. They missed a field goal. Five penalties for 40 yards in the first half. That's what Clemson was averaging coming into the game. And the one that 
killed him was a false start at about the six inch line. That prevented them from probably getting a touchdown. Chris Thompson on the kick return over the third quarter. And he's got a nice return out to about the 33 yard line. And we go out to Aaron Andrews. Hey, Brad, I spoke with Bobby Bowden coming out of the half. He said the one thing he liked, his team is three points ahead. The stuff he didn't like. <laughs> Turnovers, penalties right at the goal line. You know, something else he said was the defense has played so much better than he has seen in a very long time. But he said, look, we still have another half to play. I asked him, coach, why is the defense playing better? And he said, well, you know, Aaron, when you played so bad for so long, you just don't know when you're going to play good again. And he goes, we finally did it. Now let's put another half together. Uh, the honest answer. You got to love it. 80 years young tomorrow for Bobby Bowden. It's his birthday tomorrow. Christian Ponder down the middle and complete across midfield. And Taiwan Easterling's got a first down in Clemson territory. Boy, really nice pass by Ponder. Almost didn't get it up high enough to get over Brandon May, the middle linebacker. You got to put some touch on this to get over the linebacker and just enough over the outstretched hands and into Easterling's arms. So already at the 48-yard line of Clemson. Ponder only missed two passes in that first half. Unfortunately, both misses went to guys wearing orange. Everybody's catching them. Yeah. Just a matter of who's catching them. Thomas, he had a good first half as well. Got maybe two. Christian Ponder had only three interceptions coming into this game, but turnovers, big part of the story. As this pass snatched out of the air by Clemson. And then one that uh, Maxwell, we weren't quite sure where he was going with that one. A couple of receivers might have run the wrong route. And finally, the fumble that was recovered by Clemson. It really didn't do as much damage as far as the scoreboard as most times when you turn it over that often. Well, the Clemson interception was returned for a touchdown. Yeah. Potter blitz. Nice throw. And... Down at the 41 yard line, Easterling again. So that's going to bring up third down and about three. Taiwan Easterling, great story in that he tore his Achilles tendon back in February in off season conditioning. And they didn't know if he would even come back and be able to play this year. And not only he's come back and played, he's had 100 yard receiving games like the night he had against Georgia Tech. Two big catches on this drive that's given his team a chance with a third and three at the 41. Fortson in motion. Ponder's in trouble. And tips incomplete. Finally, somebody didn't catch one of his passes. First one that's hit the ground. President Butler did a nice job defensively on the corner. Well, Cavell Connor was really putting some heat on Christian Ponder. Watch number 33 get right in beside the guard or the center's block, Ryan McMahon, and force Ponder to throw that before he wanted to. And then Butler there to knock it away. First punt for Florida State. Sean Powell in, averaging just under 41 a kick. And Jacoby Ford and C.J. Spiller are just chomping at the bit back there. Neither one of them is going to get their hands on this one. It goes all the way to the end zone. And that's probably about as safe as you can put it with those two guys back there. Clemson's only had three big plays, really. Parker. Uh, that crossing pattern to Jacoby Ford. The touchdown to Die. He had one to his tight end, and then Spiller, 45-yard run, but it didn't get to the end zone. And they subsequently stalled on that drive because of that false start penalty when they got it down at about the one-foot line. Florida State's defense, they've given up a lot of big plays this year, but they've done a way better job, as Aaron was talking about with Coach Bowden. In that respect tonight, here's Spiller. Anytime CJ gets it, you kind of hold your breath and wonder how long he will go. That time he went eight yards before Brandon knocked him out of bounds. We mentioned CJ being uh, one of 16 guys from Florida. He's from Lake Butler Union High School. Jacoby Ford, also a Florida guy. They, they already played and beat Miami, hoping to get the clean sweep of the Florida teams on their schedule. She's but, doing her own taste of the town there. 
<laughs> little girl's trying to steal your thunder. Spiller, first down. Those two are almost inseparable, Jacoby Ford and C.J. Spiller. And uh, we talked to him yesterday. I ran into him again this morning. And they're two really fine young fellas you like being around. They're both going to graduate in December after three and a half years. There's what they've done tonight with their touches. But uh, they made school a priority. Football and track. You talk about busy. As soon as they get done with football, they go to track. Not this year, though, because the NFL Combine will be waiting in the NFL draft after that for both those guys. Nice play fake. Parker buys himself some time. He's going to tuck it and head to the sideline. Good choice and a good run. Well, we the got our guys keeper. in the truck keeping track of the touches for uh, C.J. and Jacoby Ford, but one of his uh, Dabo Sweeney sons, Will, that's his job. The older one of those, he's got three sons, and Will's the oldest, and that's his job, is to work on the touch sheet. <laughs> how many touches C.J. gets? And keep his dad honest on how many times you're getting the football to 28. Dabo, 39-year-old, his wife Kathleen, Will, Drew, and Clay. He's got three boys. You saw two of them there on the sideline. And here's Jamie Hopper, the big back. They use him in short yardage situations, down near the goal line, and in this case, he looks like he has him a first down. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, Dabo Sweeney is 39, turns 40 in a couple weeks, November 20th. Right. And, of course, Bobby turns 80 tomorrow. Both Young. from Birmingham, both oh. born in the same hospital. Well, they had electricity when Dabo was born at the <laughs> hospital. I'm not sure when Bobby was there. <laughs> Basically, Bobby's twice as old as the Clemson head coach. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell him you said that. I'll make sure he knows you said that. Yeah. I did. Miss Ann might have heard that. She's with Terry Bowden tonight watching uh, for Terry's football game in North Alabama. Terry's got his team ranked number one in the country in Division Two. So Miss Ann is not at the game tonight. Well, Terry's the head coach there. Jeff Bowden, who was the offensive coordinator at Florida State for a while, is uh, on Terry's staff. Another first down for Clemson, trailing by three. Parker, plenty of time. Streaks down the sideline, and it's C.J. Spiller. We told you, you just never know yep. when it's going to happen. Another 56-yard plus play. In this case, 58 yards for another big touchdown. And credit Dabo Sweeney and Billy Napier for not going away from it. Just saying, we're just going to keep figuring out how to give him a chance to make a play. Did a great job of isolating him on the middle linebacker on that one. They've missed an extra point. This time, they don't. Clemson regains the lead. Mr. Excitement streaking down the sideline. C.J. Spiller caps an 80-yard touchdown drive with a long scoring reception. C.J. Spiller's touchdown has put Clemson back in front. Third lead change tonight, 21-17. They're working on his knee over there. He's got the most receptions by a running back in school history. He's got 206 all-purpose yards tonight. Jacoby Ford has 59. That gives them 265 as a duo. They're closing in on the all-time duo mark in NCAA history for all-purpose yardage. Chris Thompson has got some good yardage of his own out across the 25 to the 27, and Todd's going to take us back to the touchdown. Now, here's C.J. Spiller, okay, and here is the linebacker, Kendall Smith. Now, as soon as C.J. goes out and turns his eyes back to the quarterback and that linebacker bites on it, it's over. Right here, it's done. Because as soon as he draws even, he's too fast for that linebacker to keep up with. So that little bit of an out fake and the linebacker biting just a hair was all C.J. Spiller needed. And then Parker got him the football. You see him holding his right knee after that scoring reception. And 
Clemson's defense fired up. Pick up of maybe two for Thomas. Let's check in with Aaron. Brady's trying to warm up that knee right now after Davo Sweeney came over, several of his teammates. I just looked at him and said, you all right? He said, yep, good to go. So he's fine, he's saying. Yeah, he ain't done tonight, I'm sure. 20th time, 50 or more yards. That's incredible. The thing is, with that kind of speed, you just never know. You can bottle him up, bottle him up, bottle him up, and then boom, it's gone. And uh, that, that's the kind of player he has been his entire career here. Potter the quick slant, and Reed can't hold it. So it's going to be third down and long for Florida State. Reed saying, I should have had it. Rashad Hall. He's had a good night. The freshman is a big part of that secondary. Yeah. He's got four interceptions on the year. Very, very smart player. Really has great understanding of the entire Clemson defense. Crowd getting into it for the Clemson defense. Third and eight. Ponder, nice throw and catch and first down to Rod Owens. He's a tough cookie. Yes, this is a nice job of staying in there because Ricky Sapp got a great jump at the top of the screen. I thought he was going to get to Ponder, but Ponder stepped up enough and made a nice throw under duress. And for Rod Owens, I mean, uh, the last three games, this guy's been unbelievable. That's his sixth catch tonight. So in the last two and a half games, that's 22 catches. He only had, coming into this year, in his first three years combined, only 30 catches. So this is a, a guy playing his best ball in his last year. Play action, Ponder, watch it all. Going deep, and it's almost intercepted. Fortune, the intended receiver. Nice job in the secondary to break it up. Only three races remaining. Jimmy Johnson holds the lead right now, looking for an unprecedented four straight championship. NASCAR heads to Texas. Dixie's 500 is coming up tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern time on ABC. Begins with NASCAR countdown. Maxwell broke up that long ball intended for Fortson. Second down now, Florida State's. Tavares Presley's checked into the backfield for the first time tonight. As you look behind him and his quarterback. Play action. They want to set up a screen to the right, and he oh, it. Boy, they had it oh. set, too. We're talking with Kevin Steele yesterday, defensive coordinator for Clemson. What did he tell us that in the last four games, Florida State has attempted 37 yeah. screen passes? 37 screens, and, and those were just the ones that they actually threw. Yeah. A lot of their screens, now this is a cold screen. A lot of the wide receiver screens that Florida State runs are attached to running plays, and it's up to the quarterback to check whether to do it or not. That was a cold screen that was set up perfectly, but Thomas took his eyes off the football. Thomas in there on a third down at 10. Four wide outs for Ponder. Clemson going to bring an extra guy. Ponder, oh, what a catch. Taiwan Easterling, he's had some big catches this year. He had a couple late in the second quarter, but none better than that one. Pick up of 16 yards on third and 10. See, when you feel good about all your receivers like Christian Ponder does, then you look for the best matchup. And maybe it's not going against the corners, but it's finding a safety that's in coverage on a wide receiver. In this case, it's Marcus Gilchrist, the safety, guarding Easterling. So you find the best matchup, and as long as you feel good across the board, that gives the quarterback a lot of options. Easterling, three grabs now for 40 yards. Fake the end around, Ponder this time. Clemson wasn't buying it, but he's still going to throw it deep. And Reed almost got to that ball. Incomplete pass. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brad, Florida is starting to put things away now against Vanderbilt. Not that they were ever really threatened. Taco Bell studio update. Tim Tebow backpedaling. Oh, 
finds David Nelson in the back. Not sure he wasn't looking for Riley Cooper there, but it wound up good for the Gators. 27-3. It's on ESPN2. And on ABC, many are seeing Cincinnati as they will remain perfect. Up 30-10 to early in the second half against UConn. All right, Reese, thanks here. Clemson in front by four. Trying to continue their quest to win the Atlantic Division of the ACC. Ponder keeps and on the run. He's going to be very close to the first down. Boy, what a tough guy. I, I tell you, again, you, you rib injury last week against North Carolina State. Jimbo wanted to limit his runs, and this is a quarterback taking it on himself and, and realizing this is a, a you know, a chance to get close to a first down. We need to get this ball moving, and I'll go ahead and grit my teeth and run the football if I need to. Third down and less than a yard. Ninth play of the Florida State drive. And gonna have a timeout. Big third down coming up. Clemson takes a timeout with 8.24 remaining in the third quarter. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Affleck. We've got you under our wing. And Merrill Lynch Wealth Management. Learn more at ml.com slash help2. Ford and Spiller on the sideline. C.J. Spiller with a touchdown that's given Clemson the lead. 21-17. Third down. Ponder ran on third down and one earlier. This time he'll let his tail back to it. And he's got the first. Jermaine Thomas pops through there for the first down. Let's check in with Aaron. Hey, Brad, cornerback Chris Chancellor for Clemson is done for the game with a lower left leg injury. Now, that happened in the first half. In for him is sophomore Cody Senzaba. And when we talked to Kevin Steele yesterday, he said when he's out there, he's a factor. He was in the first half. He was one of the guys that caught uh, one of Christian Ponder's interceptions. So made a big impact there. But big news on Chris Chancellor. Not good. Chancellor, a longtime starter, his 35th start tonight at cornerback, which is phenomenal. At that position to start that many games in college. And of course, uh, he's still hurting from the loss of his good friend and former high school teammate, Jasper Howard of UConn. He stayed after the Miami game for the funeral a week ago Monday of uh, the lost UConn player and his good friend. Played together at Madison Edison High School. That's that secondary now. Those guys that have been together for a long time, they came into the night with 30 combined interceptions. So when you play together that long, good things happen. And those guys that have started a lot of games out there have picked off a lot of passes. They'd like to do that right about here on Christian Ponder. 11th play of the Florida State Drive. But it's ground game right now for the Knowles, and they're making it work. Thomas upended by Hall, but he's got another first down. As he went, Clemson has a nickel defense in, or more defensive backs than they have linebackers, then it's kind of advantageous to go ahead and run the football. You got your quarterback in the shotgun, you still have three wide receivers, so it still looks like pass formation. But you match up better running the football against a sub-package defense. In the red zone now, Florida State. Trying to regain the lead, change the lead again. We've had it three times go back and forth. This time, the defense won't let Jermaine Thomas get loose. DeAndre McDaniel holds on for dear life to make the tackle after a pickup of about a yard. Brad, Brad Clemson senior cornerback Creston Butler now on the sidelines as well. He's grimacing. Can't really figure out what his injury is right now, but all the trainers are surrounding him, and uh, he does not look comfortable. Uh, Clemson's running out of corners. They put in Xavier Brewer to take the spot of Butler. Ponder to the end zone. Out of bounds. Fortson made a great attempt, but he ran out of end zone. And Xavier Brewer, they went right after him. Yeah. <laughs> nice job by the Richard freshman out of Jacksonville to help 
prevent a touchdown. And I don't know how much he had to do with it. It was more. Ooh. Wow. Oh, ball, ball, ball. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't see that. We couldn't see the corner of the end zone. It's a nice job by Fortune going up high to make the catch. And he did have one foot down, but he wasn't able to secure the football. Another third and long. They've converted third and eight, third and ten on this drive. Ponder just going to loft one. They've converted another one. Almost into a touchdown. Lonnie Pryor has got it first and goal. Four for four on third down on this drive. Just when you uh, you think you got a chance to get him off the field, you can. And now Florida State with a no huddle hurry up here inside the two. First and goal there. Looking to regain the lead. Ponder's going to do it himself if he can get there. No signal. Well, he apparently is just inches shy of the end zone. Boy, and those were not cheap third downs they converted either. Well, third and eight, third and ten, third and one, and the last one. Now they come up to the line again. Clemson, I don't know if they've got enough guys out there even. Ponders in the end zone. Flags are down. If it's against Clemson for not having their personnel straight no out, it should be a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. All right, so we're actually going back to the previous play. Well, Clemson is very lucky there because that was a touchdown. They had two guys not only running off the field, but on Florida State side of the of the formation. So it would have been a penalty on them. This is the play they're going back to look at. Water was so close. You can see his wide receiver, as you might expect, signaling touchdown, looking down the line. It was ruled that he was down at the one, so they'd have to have indisputable video evidence to change the call. What we couldn't see was if he ever stretched the ball out. You know, you, it doesn't matter if his helmet crossed the plane. It's got to be the football. Again, we mentioned the, and Aaron just reported on the loss of a couple corners in this drive, but we mentioned earlier in the first quarter the, the absence of Daquan Bowers, one of their outstanding defensive linemen. That The strength of this defense has been their defensive front. And uh, with Bowers out of there, it, it makes After a difference. After further review, the call on the field stands. The ball was short of the goal line. Second down. So it's going to be second and goal from about the one foot line. <laughs> There's the football and the end zone. 16th play in a drive that's covered six minutes. From atop Christian Potter. Thomas stretches the ball out and might have lost it. They say touchdown. Jermaine Thomas scores from less than a yard out, and Florida State's back in front. Fifth rushing touchdown of the year for Jermaine. Well, Lonnie Pryor, the fullback, was the lead blocker. Clemson tried to come over the top, and Thomas went underneath. Watch the linebackers come over the top, and Thomas just slips right underneath them into the end zone. Extra point is good. Impressive drive. A long one. Took a long time. Took a lot of plays. Converted some big third downs. And then Jermaine Thomas, you saw, he had to kind of scoop the ball up. He'd already crossed the goal line to give his team the lead. And a late flag on the extra point. Everything going against Clemson. So when all the dust settles, it's going to be 
There were multiple fouls against the receiving team. Illegal participation players participating on the defense. That penalty is declined as a personal foul for roughing the snapper against the defense. That penalty will be accepted on the succeeding kickoff. The try for point is successful. Wow. That's a good penalty for Florida State because what that means is they get extra yardage. They might be able to kick it out of the end zone and keep it away from C.J. Spiller. Fourth lead change as Dan corrected on the scores 24 to 21 as we went to the break 504 remaining in the third quarter. This date in college football history 1869 first game ever played Rutgers and Princeton got together Rutgers won that first game six to four each score counted as a game and ten games completed the contest. You had to move the ball by batting it with your feet your hands your heads or your shoes. And it's kind of the way it still is only <laughs> we're passing it around a lot more right now 24 21 let's pass it off to Reese. Brad USC spent the first half in a funk against Arizona State. They only had four first downs. Matt Barkley swinging out to Damian Williams early in the second half in a 7-3 game. And Williams would sort of ignite the Trojans. He would go 75 yards. Initially, he was ruled down when you see him dive for the pylon. They looked at it, gave him the touchdown. 14-3, Trojans up. Well, exactly what Todd was talking about with that personal foul on the extra point. The kick kept it out of the hands of C.J. Spiller, and Clemson's got to start at its own 20-yard line. And C.J.'s in there behind his quarterback, Kyle Parker. Clemson now trailing by three again. The go before in motion. Fake it to him. Roll and throw to a wide. Open tight end, but it was behind him and drops. Dwayne Allen was open. And a lot of uh, motion and activity. Fake to Ford, slip spiller underneath as your under receiver, but he's going for the bigger one, and it was a good idea. Just got to get that ball out in front of the tight end, not behind him. Clemson known to. Use some trick plays. They faked it there. They might come back to something like that later. But you Bill Ford and C.J. Spiller both involved. This time Parker rolls all the way to the sideline and just gets rid of it. Penalty marker down. Now that one didn't look right there. I'm not sure what that play was, but that one didn't look right. Jack Childress will tell us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Legal man there was something field. messed up with that play because there were linemen downfield. I think the linemen looked like they thought it was a run. Yeah, that's the call. Legal man downfield. So again, penalties are hurting Clemson big time. Number 62 of the offense was ineligibly downfield. That penalty is declined. Third down. Mason Cloy was the guy that was downfield. You know, Dabo talked to Aaron at the half about keeping their poise, and uh, that's what you have to do in this this kind of a game, this type of situation. You control your own destiny. You got to play well down the stretch, and you got to play with poise. They passed on all their third down situations tonight. No different here, and this one's going to be good for the first down. Bouncing out to the 34-yard line is Terrence Ash. Got 14 yards. Ash, a former walk-on who was on a track scholarship. A lot of speedy guys on this wide-out crew for Clemson. Yeah, you got him bunched up over here. And Ash is the guy who gets right into the middle. Nice job by Kyle Parker reading it, finding the open man. Nick Moody is the guy that's shaken up for Florida State, so that's momentarily halted play here with 444. Remaining in the third quarter. C.J. Spiller tonight, his combined yardage well over 200 yards again. You look at Reggie Bush, and, and Reese just had uh, that cut in on the update on the score for USC. These are the only two guys that have ever rushed for over 2,500 yards, had over 1,200 yards receiving, kick return yardage of 1,500 plus, and then punt return yardage of 500 plus in a career. That's really good company. 
<laughs> That's really good company. Yeah. And CJ tonight has a long touchdown reception. He's got a 45 yard run. He's got a two point conversion run, but he hasn't been able to escape as a return man yet tonight. And I say yet because we've still got a quarter and four minutes and 38 seconds to go. Palmer, the tight end in motion on a first down. Spiller into the second wave and into Florida State territory. 21 more yards. And now Clemson's going to try to hurry it up here. They don't huddle, or they huddle very seldom, but in some cases they'll go on a quick count, and they do here. Spiller again in the open field. C.J. Spiller to the corner. He, he's not healthy. He's no. not 100%. He almost pulled up there. Yep. Still a 35-yard run. Remember, he's got a bad foot. He's had a toe problem since the beginning of the season. That might be bothering. We saw him holding his knee earlier. But you know what? C.J. Spiller at about 80% is better than a whole bunch of guys. And you see, he pulled up yep. heading to the far side. But he does have his team a first and goal. Boy, back to back, two outstanding runs and good blocking up front. Just so plays. Just the, the bread and butter of this Clemson run offense. Andre Ellington, the young guy, takes his spot in the backfield and now flushes out of that backfield. Parker, pump fake, wants to go back to the corner on the far side. And Palmer's the intended receiver, but nobody out there but Patrick Robinson. Yeah, really well played by Patrick Robinson. He was not fooled. That was a design roll to the right and throwback, expecting nobody to be home on the defense. Patrick Robinson, the senior, was not fooled at all. Watch all the action goes to the right. His eyes are to the right. And at the last minute, he's looking to throw it back to a wide open receiver. But that's not what he got. He does the right thing, throwing it away. Second down to go. And again, Parker will look to the sideline. Ellington readjusts to flank him to his left. Three wide outs, second and goal. Just outside the eights. Parker. Curry across the middle. Oh, Jacoby Ford had it, and it would have been a touchdown. It hit him right in the six, and he knows it. Yep. Florida State came with a blitz. Kyle Parker read it. He dropped it, left the pocket to buy some time, and makes a nice throw to Ford. And you're right, he would have walked into the end zone. That's a hard throw, too. Across your body, back to the middle. Third and goal. Parker pumps once, goes wide open. Touchdown. The tight end Palmer. We got a penalty marker down. Penalty marker down. If it's a false start, it's negating six points. Another. A legal man downfield for the second time on this drive. Number 83 of the offense was covered up by the wide receiver. He was an ineligible receiver who went downfield. Five yards, repeat third down. Wow. Well, this is Dwayne Allen. Now, he's the guy that got the penalty. But this receiver here has to be back off the line of scrimmage so that you don't have that problem. Either that or Dwayne Allen is supposed to stay in and block. But that formation would suggest he's supposed to go out on the route. So the problem really was on Xavier Dye, number 21, not Dwayne Allen. C.J. Spiller is back out for Clemson as a wide receiver. Parker in trouble and... Just about got away. Well, for the second time tonight, Clemson has had a huge penalty inside the 10-yard line. One time inside the one-yard line, that time inside the 10. And there's a lot of time left, and, and Clemson may very well win this football game, but you just get this feeling like too many wasted opportunities in a game like this to win. You know, you, you, you take points off the board. They've missed field goals. They've missed extra points. 
Well, they can ill afford to miss this field goal. It'll tie the game from 26 yards out. But Jackson's had trouble tonight. He's still having trouble. Wow. Yeah. Too many missed opportunities. A missed extra point and two field goals that uh, are supposed to be hit at this level of competition. The first two misses, it was a bad snap. This was a good snap and a bad kick. 26 yard attempts. And the problem is, it's like a kick in the gut to the Clemson football team. You, you, right. you, you drive down there, you make a bunch of plays, you get a penalty that calls a touchdown back, and then you miss a, a field goal, and you're still behind three points, and you feel like you just got the wind kicked out of you. Ponder throws complete, and it's just pitch and catch. Ponder's so confident as you said Todd earlier in all his receivers and especially tonight quite frankly Rod Owens yeah. the guy they call old school he's the old man of the group the senior he likes old clothes he likes old music he's like a Motown guy and Rod Owens is having a big night for an old man or for old school I should say and remember you got some different corners in the game for Clemson that was Byron Maxwell at the one corner Cody Sensabaugh is in at the other corner because of some injuries for Clemson. Remember, Florida State went 16 plays on their last drive. This time, Ponder throws incompletes. They intended for Jermaine Thomas. Let's check in with Eric. Brad, when Florida State went up 24-21, Clemson's defense came over to the sideline, and you had guys just screaming at each other, different players just going after each other. At that moment, Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, and Dabo Sweeney sat with the defense in a huddle for a good five to six minutes and just calm them down stressing you've got to go to the next play composure do not you don't play like this I, I give Dabo so much credit for that he sat with them to just pull them off and get them on the same page let's see if he did second and ten Thomas and he's out to the 40 short of the first down but it's going to be third and short well, Dabo was talking with us earlier this week and he said he tries to tell these guys there's about 155 plays in a game. You've only got a month of football left. There's 22 more days to the end of the season. Just take every play and make it a game by itself. Yeah. Think about it as 155 one-play games. And that's kind of what Aaron was talking about that I'm sure they were trying to re-stress into the minds of the Clemson defense. Third down and two. They had no trouble with third downs on their last drive. This time they'll try to pressure Ponder. He lost one, and he's got another first down. Yeah, that's nice. And it's a frustrated Clemson defense, you can just tell, because that time Brandon May got back there trying to hustle back yeah. in coverage, and he slid out of bounds on the sideline, and he was just shaking his head. You know, Florida State doesn't really attack you in your passing game vertically down the field. Most of it is... is Horizontal a lot of crossing routes a lot of things that are going side to side and the accuracy of ponder Really makes that defense run and stretch That is a fifth different receiver ponder has hit on third down Put your head around that a little bit. That'll tell you how efficient he's been Here comes an end around ball is on the ground scooped up by Reed and Burt's in a heap of trouble yep. Loss of 14 yeah, you know, I think Jimbo Fisher has called a great game, but that's one where not sure you need it right there. You know, you, you got some momentum, you're throwing, you're running, you go with a little trickeration, and uh, it was a good pitch by Ponder, but Burt Reed was looking at the defense and not the football, and now you got a long yardage situation. The first down marker is way down at the Clemson 41. Line of scrimmage for Florida State, their own. 35. Thomas will be wrapped up after a pickup of about four. DeAndre McDaniel, one of four or five Tigers there to meet him. And the quarter comes to a close. Well, our lead has changed four times. At the end of three, it's kind of like it was at halftime. Florida State up by three. Can Clemson turn it around and stay alive for an ACC crown?
ESPN's Monday Night Football. Big Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers traveling out to the Mile High City take on the 6-1 Denver Broncos. 8.30 Eastern time. Starts with pregame coverage. Served up by Applebee's at 7. Start of the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackley, Jared Andrews and our ESPN crew at Death Valley. Clemson trails Florida State to open the fourth. And here comes Jermaine Thomas running over guys. Got a nice game. That was on a third and a mile. And he got about uh, 13 yards. So Florida State, probably a smart play in that uh, there's not too many plays in your arsenal that's third and that long. Had they thrown, it might have been an interception. This way they've got a, another chance to try to pin Clemson. The only thing is, don't kick it to the two guys that are waiting on the other end if you can help it. If you kick away from one and it goes to the other, it's just as bad. Ford and Spiller both back there. Powell will try to keep it out of their hands. And by doing so, yep. kicked it off the side of his foot and out of bounds. Exactly right. You know, you can have a team that blocks a lot of punts or great returners, and it affects the punter. Speaking of punts, take a look at tonight's Good Hands flashback. Brought to you by Allstate. Matchup between Florida State and Clemson. Bobby Biden calls a fake punt with a minute and a half left. Game tied at 21. It's the old Puderewski. And Leroy Butler gets a handoff and goes 78 yards to the two-yard line that set up the winning field goal. Florida State won it 24-21. There's fumble Ruskies, and then there's punter Ruskies. That was the punt Ruski. <laughs> Clemson's got the ball back. We hear a pin drop in here right now. Parker. That almost lit the crowd up. Triple coverage, and he still almost tucked that into Dwayne Allen, the tight end. Yeah, but this is a play that Kyle Parker, he, he got greedy. I mean, he had an underneath route, and he's just got to take what that defense will give. Now, watch as he goes back. He's going to try to force it downfield, but underneath, he's got a wide open receiver right there, Jacoby Ford. Just go ahead and get him the football and let him make a play instead of forcing it into traffic. And that, that's something you just got to learn the more you play. Parker only two out of seven this half. Throws this one complete to Ford, but it's only a pickup of a yard or two. Jacoby Ford and C.J. Spiller, I mentioned earlier, are now the all-time leading duo in NCAA history in all-purpose yardage. That's rushing, receiving, returns. And those two guys went over the mark tonight. 10,285. Marshall Falk and Darnay Scott held the previous mark. So another record set by the two best friends who hang out together all the time, on track together. Roommates and have been ever since they got here at Clemson. Uh-oh, throws intercepted. I think it's an offside call against Florida State because otherwise Jamie Robinson's got his second interception return for a touchdown. Offside, defense number 16, five-yard penalty, it's still third down. Wow. So this time it's Florida State that makes a mistake that costs points. Mr. Alexander is the, the guilty party. <laughs> Mr. as in M-I-S-T-E-R, not just <laughs> M-R period. Mr. is his name. That's what I call Todd most of the time, but that's just the M-R, Mr. Blackledge. <laughs> or Sir Todd. Ellington in the backfield now with Parker. Parker's got to make some good choices here. Time is of the essence, third and three. That is a good one. Ellington's got a first down. Boy, nice effort by Ellington. He, he was hit behind the first down. Dakota Watson was there, and he just showed some strength and determination to get this first down. Watch, Watson has him, but he can't wrap him up, and the balance and the strength of Ellington gets the first down. They're really high on this freshman out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. They think he'll be a good replacement for C.J. Spiller next year. If you can ever replace right. C.J. Spiller. Palmer the tight end in motion. Florida State almost jumped again. And Ellington is bottled up by Nigel Bradham and dropped for about a yard loss as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. 
All right, guys, it has been a back and forth wild game between Tulsa and Houston. Taco Bell Studio update right after a Tulsa touchdown put them up 11. Tyron Carrier on the track team for the Cougars and showing the Golden Hurricane why, taking it all the way back 38 34 in that game in the fourth quarter. Here, 24 21, second and 11. This is where Xavier Dye has come through for Parker a few times. He's in motion as they pitch it. And Spiller made one man miss. He's just missing that little bit of burst. There's a couple times tonight we didn't think yeah. he was going to get caught. And uh, you said he's just not healthy. Not 100% anyway. And whether it's his knee or that toe that's been bothering him, that extra gear a couple times hasn't quite been there. Yeah, he's trying to gut it out and trying to to be in there for his team and as you mentioned you know him at 85 percent is still faster than a lot of guys out there but he's not completely himself third down and eights here comes a blitz Parker stands in Ooh, almost intercepted incomplete diving attempt that time by Patrick Robinson. And it's punting time for the Tigers. Trying to get it to Jacoby Ford. And Robinson had a way better play on the ball than anybody else. Dawson Zimmerman to punt. Way back on the other end is Greg Reed, who had one excellent return tonight of 43 yards in the first quarter. Another guy you'd prefer not to kick it to or not have it returned by. And this will be a fair catch taken by Reed at the 35-yard line. 12-28 remaining. Florida State clinging to a three-point lead. Their leader on the sidelines ready to go again when we come back. After early dominance when they joined the ACC in the last five years hasn't been so good for Florida State just over 500 in fact they don't have a lot of first round draft picks in fact none in the last two drafts after all of those we talked about under Mickey Andrews and haven't finished in the AP top 10 since 2000. And Bobby Bodden after all those years of finishing in the top four in the country for a long stretch of years would like to get a big road win tonight and keep some ACC hopes alive for this year. Ponder going deep and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rashad Hall. Nice spin move by Hall. And he's still on his feet. Oh, that is not a good move, but it's scooped up by one of his teammates, Cabell Connor. Sometimes the freshman mistakes just turn out right. Yeah. Great play to make the interception. Now the ball hung in the air a long time. It was not a good throw by Christian Ponder. Now here's the safety right here, and the ball is being thrown to this sideline, but watch how long it hangs in the air for Christian Ponder. It hangs and it hangs, and here comes the safety all the way from the middle of the field and able to get there to make the play, Richard Hall. And then, then this is not a good decision at the end to flip it back, but it did work out in this particular case. Cavell Connor took it on one hop and took it all the way to the 24-yard line. Here's Clemson's opportunity again. Well, they bite their tongue, though, like they have so many times tonight. Spiller got about four. To the 20-yard line. And again, C.J. Spiller, you can tell by the look on his face, trying to gut out whatever it is, his knee or his foot, and staying out there because he said, you know, I want to go all the way to Tampa, and then I want to win a bowl game. I've never done that here. Been to bowl games, didn't win them. Second and six. They'll try him again the other way. Pushes off his blocker, cuts to the corner, and again, he pulled up. It's just not there. He's a guy with a Hemi engine, and right now it's it's just missing that gear. And uh, the problem, as we take a look at uh, a new potential kicker, Spencer Benton, yep. warming up. 
The problem for Dabo Sweeney right now is, okay, do, do I keep Spiller in there less than 100, or do I put the freshman in Ellington who maybe doesn't have everything down as pat as I know Spiller does? They got short yardage situation here, third and two. Jacoby four in motion. The pitch goes that way. Jacoby trying to get a little block for his teammate, and he did. He's got out there. Got the man in yeah. front of him and gave Spiller something to shoot for, which was the first down marker. And again, uh, you, you, you need him in the game because you want his toughness, you want his leadership. And now once you got the third down conversion, you can take him out, give him a break, and bring Ellington in. But on this third down critical play, you keep him in, even if he's not 100%, because you know he'll get the first down for you. Inside the 12, just outside the 11, in fact. It's first down, Clemson. Trying to regain the lead. Ellington wrapped up in the backfield and actually got spun forward by the tackle. Now, the question again. Clemson, can they finish strong? Can they continue to keep control of their destiny? Can they make an opportunity pay off here? They've had missed opportunities tonight. Missed extra point, two missed field goals, a fumble in the red zone, a touchdown called back in the red zone. Here they are again. Inside the 10 yard line, can they pay it off and take advantage of the opportunity? This isn't just the red zone for Clemson, it's been the dead zone uh -huh. inside the 10. Second and eight. This time, touchdown. Todd Blackledge's question. Do you put him in there when he's not quite as experienced? Fresh legs, fresh feet, fresh score. Nine-yard touchdown. And our fifth lead change. Spencer Benton's going to try the extra points. And he missed it. Goodness. Can the kicking be any worse? for Clemson tonight. And that's a critical miss again. Jeez. The touchdown good. Kicking game bad. College Football Prime Time is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by your local GM Goodwrench dealers. It's Goodwrench and Go Time. Visit Goodwrench.com for details. What a picture outside Memorial Stadium, Clemson, South Carolina. Another lead change, our fifth of the night. Tigers back in front, but again, they have left eight points out there just with extra points and makeable field goals. Trying to find a kicker that can put it through the uprights when they desperately need it. Greg Reed from the one. Reed got a block, follows them well, and is knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line as we take you back to Ellington's touchdown run. Well, they brought the fresh back in, Ellington. It's a, a zone play, and it's just beautiful execution at the point of attack. And the key block was their senior left guard, the only starting senior up there, Thomas Austin. Watch this block that he gets on Moses McCray. Gets into him and then just flattens him. And that's all that Ellington needed to get into the end zone. Outstanding block. Austin, first team, all ACC performer. The old man on the front wall and the guy they say at the next level will be an excellent guard in the National Football League. Nine and a half to go. Thomas broke two tackles, not the third. Picked up about two on the play before Kevin Alexander made the stop. Now just three races left. Jimmy Johnson trying to pull that unbelievable four straight championship. The Dickies 500 in Texas tomorrow. 
Starts 2.30 Eastern time on ABC. Chase for the Sprint Cup tomorrow at 2.30. Here, it's now become a sprint in the fourth quarter to the front spot of the Atlantic Division of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Remember, Florida State needs to win out and hope that Boston College would lose a couple more times along the way. Clemson's got the lead here with 8.51 remaining. If they win their remaining games, they would be in the ACC championship. I made the point that that was such a crucial miss on that last extra point. Why? Because it's a three-point game. They make that, then it forces Florida State to have to score a touchdown to take the lead. As it is, a field goal can tie the game and potentially put it into overtime. So not as much sense of urgency as it could have been for Florida State. Thomas hesitates in the backfield, and he's going to lose yardage. Loss of one. We check in with Reese. Brad, time for Sports Center right now. Seven teams entered the day undefeated. Cincinnati, one of them. At Cincinnati UConn game getting tied to Robert McLean with an 87 yard punt return. At the time it was 37-17. Now Cincinnati, it's a 40-32 game. Northwestern was unbeaten coming into the day, but Northwestern upset them, or Iowa was unbeaten, I should say. Ricky Stanzi was hurt in the game 17-10 the final. Sports Center coming up after the game. ESPN News keeps you current. Ponder, quick slants, completes. It'll be short of the first down, and Rod Owens has another catch. His ninth of the nights. Remember, Chris Chancellor, one of those senior, experienced defensive backs, over 30 starts in his career, out on crutches. Byron Maxwell in the game now as a starting corner. And uh, they've, they've gone after him some. Ponder his own third down tonight. Needs another one. Third and four. Flushed. Throws on the run and it's high. Incomplete. Clemson's defense holds that time. C.J. Spiller's coming out again with Jacoby Ford. And see, even if C.J.'s not 100% healthy, putting him back here on punt return makes this punter think about it. Behind Sean Powell. Going to do a little rugby job. This one's fieldable for Spiller at the 18. And out to the 26. So he got what he could. First time he's been able to run back a punt tonight. Well, the low Senior Class Award signifies a student athlete's excellence in the classroom and on the field, as well as their service to their communities. Here's a look at the finalists. You can log on to SeniorClassAward.com to learn more, and you can text the word football to 74567 to cast your votes. Clemson is 644 away from its biggest win in a long time. They haven't won an ACC crown since 1991. They win the next three, and they're guaranteed their first trip to the ACC title game in Tampa. But still, 644 to play. And Ellington, only about a yard. Holds on to the ball, though. Dakota Watson with the tackle. Ellington helping up his lineman. <laughs> Not want to conserve his energy. He's going to come out, and that means Spiller's going back in. There's the dynamic duo. They've broken the all-time record tonight for combined yardage. There's what CJ's done. <laughs> and that's kind of an off night for him, yeah. to be honest. Palmer with a tight end in motion on second down and nine. And it's going to be a keeper by Parker. And he's got a first down. Nice job. A little zone read. We haven't seen Clemson do that. But you got to do it to make a defense stay honest. I mean, uh, you're expecting it's going to go to Spiller. You fake it, and they crash in to tackle the back. The quarterback has to pull that and keep it. The only guy that knows he's going to do that is Kyle Parker. Everybody else blocks it like CJ's getting the football. And now the clock 
continues to work under six minutes now. Florida State has all its timeouts. Clemson used one, remember, earlier in the third quarter. Kyle Parker, just a redshirt freshman, two sport athlete, trying to, big, trying to win his biggest game ever in a Clemson football uniform. Well, he looked pretty quick on that one now, huh? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't, he's limping a little bit, and he looks a little gimpy, but he didn't look gimpy or limpy on that front. And he just told Coach Sweeney, I'll stay out here. <laughs> Fast <laughs> and faster, as yeah. Todd called he and Ford earlier. Ellington comes in to spell him again. <laughs> the first down, Clemson taking its time. Ellington broke a tackle. Ellington! All the way to the five. 43 more for the young guy. He does look a little like CJ if you squint. Well, the problem for Florida State all season has been missed tackles. There's a missed tackle by Marcus White. He had him in the backfield. He misses that. And the next thing you know, Ellington is inside the five. They mark it at the six-yard line. First and goal, Clemson. C.J. Spiller cuts outside, trying to get to the corner, and got down to the two. That Florida State defense had played so well in the first half. And now they're rocking on their heels a little bit. Hoping to come up with nothing worse than a field goal. Clemson gets a touchdown and Florida State's in trouble. 158 rushing yards for C.J. Spiller on about 100% wheel. Well, I tell you what, if you ever had any question about his toughness, his durability... He's, he's making a statement about that tonight, staying in the football game. Three tight ends set. Second and goal, Tigers. At the Knowles, two. Parker, play fake. Throw it away if it's not there. And he got it in the back of the end zone. Touchdown! Darrell Berry, his third tight end. use them all I like this quarterback now he has got some moxie I mean, he waited he waited he threw it across his body but he put it right where he had to for the touchdown Jackson's gonna try another point after snap a little high the kick is off the upright this is insane unbelievable well still it's a nine-point game so it's two possession situation for Florida State. For Clemson fans, thank goodness they found the end zone because they sure can't get it over the crossbar. Death Valley is rocking. 406 remaining. Clemson 33, Florida State 24. Ellington, the redshirt freshman, got him down close. Kyle Parker threw his fourth touchdown pass, a career high. And oh boy, are they making some noise in Memorial Stadium. Greg Reed camps under this one at the two-yard line. Appended before he got to the 25. Well, a lot of chatter going on about college football scores and highlights in Section 140, powered by Windows Phone. You can learn more and join in the discussion. Text 140 to 4 ESPN from your mobile phone. With Tom Blackledge and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brad Nessler. 
Four minutes is all Florida State's got time to do something about a nine-point deficit. A lot of missed extra points and field goals or Clemson would have this one in their pocket already. But it ain't over yet, not according to Christian Ponder. Nice hit by Cavell Connor. On Jermaine Thomas. See, the problem to me with the Florida State offense tonight is that they've made some plays and they've gained some yards, but they haven't gotten any big plays down the field. So anything they do takes time. I mean, they they make yards and plays, but it's it's horizontal and not vertical against this Clemson defense. And right now, time is of the essence. Ponder. Intercepted. Going the other way, DeAndre McDaniel. His eighth pick of the year. Now it's party time. He's got a knack for the ball. He knows how to play football. Watch him read the eyes of the quarterback and jump right underneath the route. He saw it the entire way. He's then, not only the leading interceptor, he's the leading tackler on this team, and he's done it again. Man. Kevin Steele calls him a violent hitter. Yeah. He just kind of gave a violent hit to the quarterback who was trying to save him from getting to the end zone, and Christian Ponder is in a world of hurt. Clemson's three and a half minutes away from their fourth straight win, their fifth win at home. Spiller. CJ to the end zone. the football game and the extra point is yes good biggest cheer of the night yeah Dabo Sweeney an excited head coach and with good reason how about that <laughs> and he meets his kicker with a chest bump we don't see that that often we talked about the road to Tampa and the ACC championship. Well, step one is out of the way, or very close to being. Florida State, they had to win it. At North Carolina State and then Virginia. And Clemson hasn't won an ACC title since 1991. I gotta tell you, partner, they struggled at times tonight. They made a lot of mistakes, but yeah. when they really needed to come through, both the offense and the defense did. And you know what? At times, this stadium was really quiet yeah. because I think people here, they so want to believe that this team's <laughs> ready to get over the hump and get to, to Tampa, win an ACC championship, but they've been down this road before where they've controlled their own destiny and let it slip away, but they found a way to keep hanging in there and make the plays tonight. That's a lot of push-ups. C.J. Spiller. If you didn't know who he was until tonight, I think you do now. If he's not on the Heisman list, I don't think I want to be around the list. Yeah, he should be. A yard deep, Greg Reed. And up the sideline to about the 25-yard line. 19 unanswered points for C.J. Spiller. There's the two buddies. And C.J. Spiller has just tied his own school yeah. record. That was against Miami two weeks ago. The two Florida schools. He's a, a kid from Lake Butler, Florida. How about that? Personal foul on Florida State. This, 
We have a dead ball, personal foul, number 12. That's half the distance to the goal, first down. You know, how sweet is this going to taste? C.J. Spiller, a great night. Splash down the national scene, first night game in two years. He said, that's what I came here for, get my degree, play all four years. Could have gone to the NFL, decided to come back, wanted to be a senior, wanted to be a leader. Now 310 more yards, yep. and Clemson still rolling. And this will be the first time in Clemson history that they have beaten both Miami and Florida State in the same year. Now, dancing, I'm not sure. Last year, Devo Swinney promised that the guys would take part in Tiger Rama, the homecoming pep rally. This is CJ. They called this Spiller instead of Thriller. In honor of Michael Jackson. I'm not sure about the dancing. I know one thing, he can run. Yeah. Well, here, here's the thing about the Heisman and C.J. Spiller right now is, you know what? Nobody's running away with it. And there are big games left to be played in November and into early December. And that's why he's right in the thick of it. Because if, if Clemson can continue to win and get themselves in position to win the ACC championship, he's got a shot. E.J. Manuel's in a quarterback. For Florida State, Christian Ponder took that big hit after that interception by DeAndre McDaniel. Not only that, but the game appears to be out of hand by some strange occurrence here. Ponder is a tough guy and a heck of a quarterback. It just wasn't the night that he was hoping for tonight. Intercepted three times, knocked around uh, four times, I beg your pardon. Career high in interceptions. Well, we knew something had to give tonight. Florida State came in the ninth best passing team in the country. And Clemson was the fifth best pass defense in the country. And uh, they didn't the hurt team, that tonight. Team in Orange won. Yeah. And almost another pass that could have been picked off. As Todd said, this huge crowd and all the folks that watch around that might not be at the game and a lot of them that are still outside tailgating and will probably stay here till three in the morning they want to believe and right now they're starting to believe this team last year had three acc losses by a combined total of 13 points kept them out of it the year before that they had a tough three-point loss at home to boston college when the Atlantic Division was on the line. And here they are, right again, taking one more step closer. Manuel in trouble. And he's going to go down. Miguel Chavis got him with help from his friends. This is a different football team from earlier in the year. You know, they, they lost to Maryland. That's they, the only bad one, really. That was the only bad one. They lost to a good TCU team, an excellent TCU team, a very good Georgia Tech team. And then they lost to Maryland, and then they had an open week. And they were 2-3, and three, and the thing could have gone any direction. And they uh, made a different commitment to their preparation, particularly their quarterback, Kyle Parker, and they have been a different team since. And they're headed for a rematch with Georgia Tech, maybe in Tampa. If they went out... And Georgia Tech beats Duke next week. That would be the matchup. And that would be an interesting one because they had a heck of a game the first time they got together in the regular season. Not to mention, they're only separated by about two hours and 15 minutes down I-85. Spiller will be happy with a yard or two. By the way, Masai, an active duty soldier, recently redeployed for a second overseas Deployment stationed in Fort Hood, Texas is our winner of the Taste of the Town. He's a 98 graduate of Clemson and his dad, Charlie Harbison, is a co-defensive coordinator yep. and safeties coach for the Tigers. He says, go Tigers, beat FSU. And Masai, your dad at least, and when you get back here, you guys uh, have a little taste of the town on Todd. Absolutely. Well, not actually on you. <laughs> Clemson now, less than two minutes remaining. They're just going to cover everybody up. Christian Ponders heading to the locker room after a tough night. And what will be a tough loss, it'll drop Florida State under 500 at 4-5. and five. Boy, these guys, these guys went to some great lengths now, I gotta tell you. Sports Center is indeed up next. 
Some of those guys need to pull their pants off. <laughs> Speaking of up. <laughs> well, Alabama win today. The Irish dreams are they dash now. Big Ten shake up with Iowa's first loss. All that. And a lot more football and a lot more of everything on Sports Center in a minute and 12 seconds. Well, this is as big a win as Dabo Sweeney's had in his year and a half. Not even year and a half. First full year. Basically just pretty much hit the one-year mark of being the head coach of this football program and with a beautiful new facility in the west end zone and Todd mentioned that earlier there's facilities not much better than the ones we just saw over there and that's the side of things and then you've got a crowd that's been waiting since almost the the Ford Danny Ford era yep. to have some kind of a reason to cheer an explosion of an ACC title they haven't won one in 18 years well, their hopes are still alive. C.J. Spiller, a little bit of everything. 45-yard run. Knocked out of bounds before he could get to the end zone. Streaking down the sideline, another 58-yard touchdown catch. And then sometimes you got to do it in close. Not to mention a two-point conversion mixed in there just for good measure. Big, big win for the solid orange. The Clemson Tigers, and they hand Bobby Bowden a fifth defeat in nine games. And that's not going to go over very well in Tallahassee either. There's actually six seconds remaining. I don't know if they can get everybody off the field or not. They'll try. Well, I mentioned for Clemson, they, they're taking one more step. Clemson took a time out to get the kids off the field. <laughs> Five seconds left. Let's check in with Reese quickly. Brad, all of a sudden, one of the unbeaten, all kinds of problems. Cincinnati and UConn, eight-point game. The Huskies' Jordan Todman goes in. Randy Edsel goes for two, but Curtis Young makes the sack. Cincinnati trying to hang on 40 to 38. We'll have all the fallout on college football final tonight with Mark and Lou immediately following Sports Center. Wow, how crazy did that game get, huh? Two point game with a little under five minutes to go. Here, just five seconds to go. And the Seminoles will fall to four and five. And two and four in ACC play and the high hopes that Florida State had even at the beginning of the season when Todd and I and Aaron saw him against Miami State and went up uh, beg your pardon Miami went down to the last play of the game what could have been a touchdown maybe would have changed their whole season who knows as it is Clemson with one of its biggest wins in a long time and they will savor this one in Death Valley for a couple of days. Well, I just saw an incredibly classy thing, too. C.J. Spiller sprinted across the field to shake hands with Bobby Bowden first and foremost at the end of this game. That's a classy kid. Four years ago, Bobby Bowden thought he had number 28. He grew up idolizing Warwick Dunn. That's why he wears 28. And there's the scene Todd was just talking about. It's C.J. Spiller and Clemson Tiger Knights not a bad performance by their defense or by their quarterback Kyle Parker for that matter with a career high four touchdowns. Let's get out of here. We heard all the stories from Bobby Bowden how he hoped maybe you would sign for Florida State. What did you just say to Coach Bowden right there? I just told him it was a good game and, and wished him luck. You know, he's he a legend. I mean, you don't find too many coaches do what he do. You know, he done came, overcame so much adversity. You know, and uh, I was so happy to get recruited by him. It was, it was a great, it was just great. We know about the turf toe. What else did you injure tonight? Uh, just my legs got real tired. Yeah, uh, that was the main thing. So I went to Andre Ellington. I told him that I'm gonna need him tonight. And uh, he stepped up for me. You know, he played big. You didn't do so bad yourself, though. 310 yards, two touchdowns. How did you kind of guts your way through it? That's, that's why I came back. I knew that my team was going to need me down the scratch. Coach keep coming to me. I was kind of down in the half because I wasn't really getting what I wanted. But uh, my teammates kept encouraging me, telling me just keep going. And it, 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 it happened. We mentioned how this was kind of your big night on a national stage. What do you hope people around the nation saw from you tonight? Uh, just a guy that just loved to play with great passion. You know, uh, every, like I said earlier, everything else will take care of itself at the appropriate time. And uh, I just hope that they've seen a team that just 
overcame so much adversity through a game and stuck together and just able to get, get a win. Got to, got to. Thanks. Appreciate it. Brad? CJ, I think everybody saw that. Great game. All-purpose record broke his own mark from a couple of weeks ago. Big win for Clemson, 40-24. That's going to wrap it up from Death Valley. For Todd Blackley, Jaron Andrews, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nestler, saying so long from Clemson. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Center is next. BC. More from the ACC Wheel of Destiny. Destiny. Spin the wheel. Wherever it stops, they win. Florida State and Clemson. Of course, you know, you know what controls destiny? Having C.J. Spiller on your side. Kyle Parker to Spiller. How good is Spiller, Mark? He's one of the best in the nation. He's going to be an early pick in the NFL draft because he does it all. Catches the ball in the backfield, runs the ball here. It's a 58-yard touchdown reception off the wheel. Run. Tigers take a 21-17 lead. Florida State has surged back on top when Spiller burst through another hole, Coach. Oh, just a great lateral movement there. And then he shows his speed here as he picked up 36 yards. He comes up limping at the eight-yard line. You know, Clemson failed to score without him on the drive. Clemson couldn't kick an extra point or a field goal. It was a remarkable thing. Andre Ellington, Spiller's replacement, takes it in. Tigers missed an extra point. They did that a bunch of times on the night. And Christian Ponder has had a great season. Finds DeAndre McDaniel, who's on scholarship at Clemson. Takes the pick. Spiller had 165 yards rushing, over 300 all-purpose. Clemson. 40 to 24. Tigers very close to their first ACC title game.